Boy, you can tell it's a long week here. I can't even can't even type the words out. But hey, man, it's Sunday night. All right, all right, all right. It's Sunday night. Alright, so after a quick little adjustment to our internet feed, we're up and going strong. Good to see you guys here Sunday night. Lance Baxter in the house, Howard Wiggins, Ken Anderson, Steve Carpenter, Karen Andrea. Good to see all you guys. Our Chopper Town family loading in the Cycle Source crew in the house. Just about six minutes. We're going live with Shop Talk. Great show tonight, man. Stick around. Lance, man, thinking back to uh, one of the coolest things that happened to us this year was you walking up to us in Daytona and giving us that Grease and Gears garage sign. I'm actually going to have that on the show tonight in your honor since you're here, so stick around. So, other than the idiot box spitting out news every two minutes about the world getting crazy, the major talk going on is Sturgis, 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 and that's what we're here for tonight. Lots of Sturgis talk in the house tonight with Shop Talk. Mr. Michael Lichter coming on with us. Um, amazing, amazing. If you've never been to his motorcycles as art display at the Buffalo Chip, it's one of the highlights of our whole year every year. And uh, he's got some of his builders coming in with us. It's going to be a good time. Lots to talk about, but because this is the milestone club, this is these are guys that have made it 20 plus years in this business. We're celebrating big anniversaries in Sturgis this year, and that's what this show is going to be all about. Three minutes, three minutes on the clock. We're counting down until we go live. It's Sunday night. All right, all right, all right. Shop talk going live in three minutes. Stick around.
All right, looks like that clock is winding down. We're going to get it going here a little bit early because it's a big show tonight, and we want to make sure you guys are with us all the way through the end, so it looks like it's time to pull this one out of the station, get it up on the tracks, all aboard. It's time to go live with Shop Talk. Here we go. Okay, Scooter Tramps and Chopper Jockeys, it's 9 p.m. on the East Coast, or shortly thereafter. Kind of close. We're doing good. We're, we're, I'm, I'm pretty proud with that. I'm okay. Uh, welcome to Shop Talk. Coming to you live from the Dennis Kirk Motorcycle Studio, 50 floors beneath the street level. Man, this was weak. Don't, listen, seriously. Don't you guys feel like after days that are like day after day after day, 100 plus degrees, that like the energy just gets zapped out of you, like it fries your brain a little bit, right? I mean, that's that's what it's been like for all of us here, right? I love it. I don't even know oh. what I'm talking about. No, I love the heat. Like, <laughs> it's been awesome. It doesn't bother me. Bring it on. It snowed at my house today. You're killing me. You're both killing me. No, like... Well, it's been so hot that I can't think straight, but um, we're going to do our best to, to rock a great show here because we got some killer guests. Um, I don't know. What, what do you got? What do you got? You ready to go to Sturgis? Who's ready? I'm, me. <laughs> huh? Me. Me. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Dude. I think only... Um, I miss our Moto family. Right. And I mean, I know a lot of them aren't going to be there this year. I think a lot of them are. I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised at who is there. But I'm ready. I'm so ready to be out there and see our family and, you know, <laughs> see where the road takes us from there. Hey, how Mark, how about Tom Kiefer says that he, uh, Sunday, Sunday, all day today, he woke up with us and he's drinking himself to sleep with us. <laughs> it's awesome. You got to have Tom. goals, Tom. You got to have Tom. goals. Those are good goals. Right. He's going to start your day off with a direction. <laughs> I want to give out to, uh, give a shout out to Amy Keene. She just had shoulder surgery this week. So she's uh, mm -hmm. in recovery right now. Can't so do Amy, a lot of work with a bad shoulder. I Amy. know. We hope you're healing well. Uh, Larry Moore is here. Mike Robb, <gasps> mailman, 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 and Cheryl are new RV owners. Oh, so they right. got to. Uh, they had him. the pleasure of dumping their RV. I saw that today. the other it looked, day. Looked like he was really enjoying himself. Um, well, you got to do the obligatory. I yeah. You got to do the obligatory Cl Clark Griswold sh <laughs> shot. You know the cousin Eddie. Shitter's full. Shitter's full. <laughs> got a nice chair for you if you want to put it in there. Right. That there is a good quality good item, quality Clark, item. if uh, you don't mind me asking. How much Let's you set, set you back? <laughs> oh, good Lord. I can probably oh. have that be a poster. All right, man. So, listen, this is uh, this is Shop Talk. We do this every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 90 to 120 minutes, 90 to 180 minutes. Whoa. Let's keep it to the one. Not let's keep it to the ninety. Right, let's it was one hundred and eighty last week. It was too much. It's ninety to one hundred twenty minutes. Pat all the bullshit. Shut his mouth. Right. <laughs> of all the bullshit we can fit, and uh, we usually start it off with a little thing we call the news. First up in the news tonight, and extremely honored and excited to talk about this. Can't make it to Sturgis this year. We got you covered. Uh, signed a new deal with the guys from Fight TV. And three days after the rally's over, we're going to be going live with 180 minutes of everything that happens for the 80th anniversary. This is going to be a real treat for us. We've outfitted the van with the studio. We have three camera crews that are going to be scouring the Black Hills to bring you every nook and cranny, all the secrets, all the stories, all the news, everything that happens in Sturgis. So fired up for this. It's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be a different perspective on Sturgis than what some of the other shows have been I think we're going to try to stay it's not going to be just about the drama and the BS that happens there it's going to be about all the amazing stuff that brings everybody to Sturgis the riding and you know what racing there is and, and the people themselves you know and the history the history is, is what it's all about too so we're going to hope to de depict uh, see, <laughs> a lot of the, that the sun's getting to you too today I'm going rogue I'm going to film all kinds of weird stuff 
I'm going to be the guy that does like the dumpsters. And, 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 ba- and back to having goals. You got to have goals. <laughs> Cutting room floor. Next up yeah, in right. the news, new Missouri law. And this is coming in from AP News. So it's actual official big time, oh, big boy. boy news. New Missouri law guts helmet retire- re- requirement for motorcyclists. Jefferson City Mo. Republican Governor Mike Pearson on Tuesday signed a bill into law that would waive the requirement that all motorcyclists wear helmets. The new law takes effect August 28 and will exempt motorcycle riders who are at least 26 years old. 26 years old. Damn it, I really am having a rough time tonight. Riders who choose not to wear a helmet will need health insurance coverage. The change doesn't apply to riders with instructional permits. The new law also will mean law enforcement can't pull over motorcyclists just to check if they're following helmet laws. So, right on. That's the news from Missouri. There you go. <laughs> In a nutshell. So, does that mean they say, like, th- what's the 26? Is that when the younger generation are technically adults now? Is that what that is? I don't know. I don't know because, the, you know, there's 18, 21. Yeah. I think they're just looking for something to look, some a, a birthday to set a precedent between 21 and 65. Because <laughs> let's, let's face it. One, I mean, you, you, you get you get all the, all the stuff. You know, you're you're 13. It's your first teenage years. You get 16. You get to drive. 21. You get to drink, and then it's it's over. Till you're 65, that it's just it's just another birthday. I don't believe that. I, I think I, they're all one to don't. celebrate. Of course you hey, don't. I get a birthday lit- month. You literally have Jiminy Cricket in your pocket. I know. We know this. So back to the news. <laughs> once, you're, once, you're, once you're 12, it's all over. You know That's I mean? not true. No uh, more birthdays. That is not true. AMA. Up there, Johnny. AMA Board of Directors responds to COVID-19 pandemic. They canceled their, their cer- award ceremony. Well, is it entirely canceled? Like, what's the what's the deal? I, <laughs> canceled. Not, not no, virtual, canceled, not yeah. anything, just canceled. So yeah, that's such a bummer. Like, it, it is, man, because I'm, well, and here's what you have to ask. Like, what would the awards be for this year? Yeah. Like true, I, I almost see their point because that's when all the number pl- one plates go out, the yeah. special consideration and achievement, and I mean, I think it's just such a bummer to see more and more getting canceled. Like even our next story from there is another cancellation: bikes, blues, and barbecue. Nope. Canceled, and I mean, well, they just moved. Yeah, it's canceled. Twenty twenty one. You know they're doing it in twenty twenty one. So yeah, I don't, I don't, bummer. I don't actually get this. Like where a lot of people are now replacing the word cancel with with postpone yeah unless you're like if if it ain't happening (gasps) until next year what oh look it sorry i got distracted (laughs) okay sorry (laughs) sorry it's brian's fault hey heather we're trying to do a show here you know a little little baby next up in the news indian motorcycle and sns cycle to race king of baggers at laguna seca this is so cool i'm dude i'm sorry this is the sickest idea that the Bytos ever came up with. Yeah, yeah, right on. And I mean, I think this even tops Flat Track Fight Club, right? And yep. Flat Track Fight Club was really, really cool. But um, if you haven't heard about this, um, it's, it's, awesome. g- it's going to be sick. Like, you know, everybody's talking about performance baggers and going hard in this direction and like the crossover kind of between this and the, the FXR crowd. Imagine racing a performance bagger around can Laguna Seca. Dude, I want to go so oh, bad. It's in October. So October cool. Like the end of October. Can, we should go. So this news comes in from India Motorcycles. India Motorcycle, America's first motorcycle company and SNS Cycle today announced a collaboration to race an Indian Challenger at the inaugural Drag Specialties King of the Baggers Invitational at Laguna Seca Raceway. The modified Indian Challenger will be piloted by the highly decorated racing champion Tyler O'Hara. Among the 14 teams invited the first ever King of the Baggers race, SNS is the only Indian Challenger entry set to face off against a field of 13 Harley Davidson Baggers. The appropriately named Indian Challenger boasts superior out of the box performance, including a best in class 122 horsepower, an inverted front suspension, and hydraulically adjustable Fox rear shock. So, this is, uh, you know, moving on with the Hundred Year War, I love that the Harley Indian thing is moving all through. Yep. You know, all brands are racing, and you know, it's awesome to see this stuff. And for these guys, anyone involved in this thing, man, to to look for a new avenue, something that hasn't been done in this end of motorcycling, my hat's just completely off to you. Yeah, and on top of that, back <clears throat> just to watch these baggers run balls out on a track against each other should be total excitement. So hey, how about if we save uh, we save some of the news okay. and um, and come back to it after because we have some guests on on hold here and obviously Heather's not going to be able to 
to con- <laughs> <laughs> to concentrate on the rest of the show. But um, if you guys are headed out to Sturgis this year, or if you're not and you want to watch Sturgis Live or any of the other uh, social media live events that will be going on to show you an inside look of Sturgis, one thing year to year that you absolutely cannot miss is the uh, the Motorcycles Art Exhibition that happens at the Buffalo Chip. One of my absolute favorites, I, I totally feel that it sets the uh, the standard actually gives us a barometer reading of where we're at, you know, what we've done and where we're going. And this is put together by world famous photographer, Mr. Michael Lichter. We're going to bring him on right now and talk some motorcycles. What's up, Michael? Hey, guys. It's great to be here again. Hi, and look, buddy. I got my sound working this week. <laughs> Shirt on, everything good. <laughs> One of these times I'm going to record you in pre-show for, for all the shit that you go through before we actually go live, though. <laughs> every, every time I've looked at the screen, Michael's either had a different shirt on or a hat. or like Every no, time I look over, he, he looks different. I like hat. the hat, Michael. <laughs> it's just these headphones make it look like some Russian giant hat. Well, it's not. Anyway, here I am again. So it's you, just covering up the ugly stuff underneath. Oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> so let, let's talk about this. Let's set the stage because it's the 80th anniversary of Sturgis. Um, you know, monumental. I mean, as, as Sturgis and Laconia both approach the 100-year marker, it, it really starts to give you great perspective, you know, about the things that have happened in, in 80 years. Let's take the 80 years of Sturgis, the things that have happened 80 years, where this country was 80 years ago, where motorcycling was 80 years ago, you know, and, and what a great way to celebrate that anniversary. And this is, this is your personal anniversary with Sturgis as well, right? Correct. It'd be uh, 20th anniversary of doing these shows as well, and 40th year that I'll be there. Right so, uh, to commemorate that, in a sense, what I'm doing is I, I invited builders to be in the show that have been in business 20 or more years. That was kind of the theme about longevity and that staying power and moxie and metal. Oh, fantastic. It's a fantastic way to celebrate all of this all around, and especially in a time where, I mean, let's let's face it, we're not only in a downward trend of motorcycling, but with everything that happened with, with COVID, I mean, effectively from bike week on, everything was shut down. So, you know, when you talk about staying power of people in this industry and, and people that have made their lives in and around this, it's, it's really on right now. Wow, to, to survive this long is amazing. The title of the show is Heavy Metal, Motorcycles and Art with Moxie. And due to COVID, we've actually made some changes. We had to, we had five builders coming from overseas and builders here that were having trouble. So um, we opened it up. First, it was all, everybody was building a new bike for this, which is normally what we do for these shows. But this year, I'm inviting people to bring in older bikes. So we're going to get, I mean, a lot of the bikes, uh, there'll be bikes back to the 80s. I don't know if there's anything from the 70s, but definitely 80s. And um, so again, all the builders are 20 years or more. And we have some builders that took spots that uh, some of the overseas builders couldn't take. They'll join us for a year. They've also been with us, uh, been in the biz for 20. And uh, I think it's going to be a great show. But because it's going to be two years now, see, next year we're going to do it again when they'll bring the new bikes next year. So next year will be all new bikes from the same people. And again, it'll be, you have the same title more or less. We'll probably go with unlock. Next year will probably be more metal or heavy metal too. But for this year, this is what we have. And I just got this. So I'm going to stand up. Here. Nice. Can you see it? Yep. Nice. And the shirts are actually already printed. So our wonderful guys at hot leathers um andy in particular really spearheaded getting that done i know it's, it was hard because the shirts had been printing i had to overprint them they're trying to do all different things but they came up with this and i'm thrilled it worked so the builders should all be getting theirs in the next couple of days right on Talk. yeah it was, you know it's a we had to deal with it just like everybody else is dealing with the changes roll with the punches but we have a phenomenal list of builders right on so um we've had a couple shows now where we a group at a time have been bringing the builders on and it's great it's great like almost as a you know a, a where are they now capacity too to hear from some of these guys and the things that have gone on in the last five and ten years of their lives and their businesses and everything it's been one of my favorite parts of this yeah it's incredible to hear their story should we uh should we introduce some of the guys that are coming on then yeah absolutely who do you want to start with you know, let's get started. I, I think we have Paul Yaffe queued up. We'll start with him. And uh, so we have three guests tonight. Uh, and I'll start by introducing Paul, who I've known for more than 20 years. I actually goes back to when I photographed Prodigy, which was his award-winning Oakland Roadster Show uh, bike of the 
year more than that. I, I guess most world's most beautiful motorcycle it was titled. It's a gorgeous bike. What's so cool about that is that was the first bike of Paul's that I photographed. And that bike is coming back to the show this year. So that'll be what he's exhibiting this year. Again, he'll have a new one next year. Paul goes back, uh, he'll be, have his 30th anniversary next year of building bikes and, and is, uh, he actually started a business in Phoenix, American Legend Motorcycle Company back in 1991. So that'll be 30, 30 years next year. And, uh, and over the years he, it's grown, it became PYO, Paul Yaffe Originals. He was doing beautiful custom choppers and all the different bikes were there. And then he came up with a specialty with baggers and called it Bagger Nation. It's like two separate businesses run under one roof. And, and that's done phenomenally well. And we've seen his stuff all over the world. I've had the pleasure of photographing many of his bikes, including uh, and some of my favorites would be uh, Rubber Nucky. I often call it um, Rubber Ducky, but Rubber Nucky, a beautiful rubber mounted knuckle that he did that I really enjoy. There's another one that's um, Chick Magnet, and that's short for Chicano Magnet because it's done with this Chicano art that's just fabulous. Uh, Ace, Eights and Aces, another one. I mean, it is, I, I've probably photographed 30 of Paul's bikes over the years. So, uh, Anyway, Paul can tell more of his own story, but I've I've seen him all over the country. And actually, we were just in Italy together not long ago, so I've seen him around the world as well. And uh, we've had fun times in New Orleans. Great, we have great stories to tell. And he's visited me here at the house. I'm riding in in the Rockies together, and he's just a, a great person, phenomenal businessman. I mean, the staying power of this guy. He has really figured out how to change with the times. If anyone has been able to do that, Paul Paul is the guy, and uh, including right to life changes like having a baby now so that's uh, all new to him lots of new things so on that note we'll go to our second builder that you'll introduce yes sir so it's it's my pleasure to introduce mr brian clock to this show brian has been one of my favorite builders for a long long time and mostly because way early on like when things were really getting heat up with heated up with the high-end motorcycles brian was never afraid to take chances you know the bike that's on on the screen right now was an early earlier bobber his cherry bomb that i was absolutely in love with you know another one that sticks out in my head the most was was the uh, root buell which i absolutely loved and i still catch a glimpse of it every once in a while coming through sturgis but brian was you know as soft-spoken you know here's a a mild-mannered man from the middle of south dakota that just like man he had hellraiser in his heart from start to finish and had a career where he found you know continually found a way to reinvent himself you know going from the the bobber and chopper style and moving through to the uh the more performance oriented until he winds up in bonneville you know where him and his team actually set the the record for the world's fastest bagger that went into you know the whole development of the flare windshield where they were you know in the real world putting this stuff to a test and coming up with a way to make that motorcycle faster and faster and set higher times and you know that that sets the the standard for everything that they've done with with clockworks to this day man and just an amazing career and when i look at the stuff that he's done the ways he that he's changed both himself and his business model throughout the years it's no mistake that he's he's one of the survivors standing at the end of this and and someone that's worthy of being exhibited in your show this year nice that you're ending on that photo of cherry bomb because that was in the black hills but cherry bomb was uh he built that special in record time for a show I did that was his first uh, time in one of my exhibitions that was at the Journey Museum. And that was a, a beautiful bike and he's doing, a, that'll be in the show this year and sort of a tribute to Cherry oh, Bomb right will be on. in next year. So that's really neat. So uh, our third and uh, our final builder that'll be in tonight is Jerry Covington. That's uh, Covington's Customs. And Jerry's been building bikes since the early 70s. Uh, they started the business, uh, I think it was called Covington Cycle City, but now uh, they officially known as Covington's Customs in, in Oklahoma in 1993. Uh, I, I believe he grew up in Texas, spent some time in California, and they settled in Woodward. And there he's built an amazing business. But one thing that really stands out about Jerry is that it's all about family. You know, Kathleen, his wife, um, I've known the two of them, I guess, since the very early 2000s when I started shooting their bikes. But uh, she's works equally in the business, business partners. And then the fantastic part is that they have all these kids in the business. There's David, who's in charge of design and fab, fab and assembly. Uh, Dusty does the body work and paint. Pee Wee does drivetrain and service work. And Cameron seems to do everything else. 
And, uh, and I'll tell you, they're doing great in their own right. David has really become a fabulous builder in his own right. So uh, certainly Jerry's got the staying power. He's been in Discovery Channel's uh, Biker Build-Offs and other shows, built bikes for a number of celebrities, Sturgis Hall of Fame in 2016. And uh, he's here to stay. He's doing it. And I'll tell you, being passed on to the family, it's, it's here to stay. So on that note, I think we could probably bring all our builders in. We can. How you doing, guys? Good. Good. How you doing? So all good here. Look at the different positions. We got a hammock, Paul's we got a shop, me. we got a home. And one thing we have to say though is Brian did announce it, on this show video. that they were pregnant some months ago and look, look what him. we have now. Brian, tell us <laughs> name, weight, birthday. <sighs> So this is Cargo Brian Clock. He was born literally two weeks ago on July 5th, eight pounds, six ounces, and he's doing great, super healthy. Oh, he is beautiful. Right. Congratulations. 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 Thank, God, Brian. thank God Vanessa's jeans outweighed mine. He's doing good. Looks oh, great. Look at him. Oh, he is gorgeous. Something tells me there's a, a Clockworks cargo line coming in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Michael, always thinking. We're going to move from stay. fairings to bags, right, Brian? That's how we stay alive, <laughs> is Michael giving us the tips. Cool. Right. On. So, guys, uh, you know, I want to – this is all about just being in business for a long time, and it's so cool that Brian's there showing his baby. And, of course, Brian already has a family in the business as well with Carly, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then, Carly, and, you know, I have three stepdaughters and it was fun. And I was telling Paul this the other day, all of a sudden, um, my stepdaughters just had babies a year ago. And wow. so now all of a sudden they're, my stepkids are parenting me, bringing over onesies, telling me about diaper changes and, you know, the whole deal. So I'm very fortunate. That's great. And maybe, maybe it's Carly that'll That's be training cool. cargo. Maybe you'll be retired. Now, I know <laughs> yeah, for that sure. does mean that sure. Paul's going to have to stay in excellent shape for <laughs> training Nash because you got a few years to go on that, right? Yeah. Well, he's so working guys, out I right think now. The, the question I really want to pose and, and, and dig into tonight is you know, there's, there's a lot of people listening and uh, people look to you for inspiration. I mean, you guys have been around, so people are, are really wondering how you did it. And so it's not only how you did it, what does it take? to stay in business and to keep the enthusiasm, the passion, what does it take to keep all that going? Who wants to roll with that one? I will. Uh, okay, Brian. No, oh, this, Jerry. This is Jerry. Oh, Jerry, great. Yeah. Uh, I think what keeps me going is just uh, uh, moving to the next one all the time and all the new ideas that you're constantly coming up with just to uh, make things happen and see what you can do and and uh, You're never doing the same thing twice, you know every day. You just do something different all the time So I just we keep our foot on the gas around here and just going for it well, I know you do I mean the way you guys crank out bikes. How many do you have to have finished for Sturgis this year? 14 Wow. 14 builds to be finished for Sturgis that they have to deliver unbelievable Paul Yaffe. What about you? What do you think? Uh, what what has it taken for these 29 years? I think the motivation is fear of having to get a real job. Probably <laughs> <laughs> would be the biggest thing. But, uh, Best you know, said I, from I, a hammock. I agree with Jerry. I, I I know you know I have a I have a sign on my wall in my office that says, "If you don't change direction, you'll wind up where you're going," uh, and that that saying has been printed in all of our catalogs. And we're constantly evolving. We're constantly uh, you know, changing direction, in, in, you know, uh, interpreting uh, the new models that, you know, come out of the Harley Davidson factory, uh, making parts for them. Harley is Harley does a great job of uh, uh, keeping us in business, uh, uh, trying to uh, constantly make new parts for uh, the, the new models they come out with. And, um, you know, we're, 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 we're lucky. Uh, to have been uh, able to uh, stay in business for almost 30 years and uh, we still have a great time at work i have a great crew uh, trust me it's it's not at all uh, something uh, that i do by myself i've got 30 guys uh, that put their hearts and souls into our business and uh, uh, and together you know we've uh, we've been very blessed uh, to been able to enjoy 
uh, the, the aftermarket of uh, uh, Harley Davidson for you know almost 30 years. You know, Paul, that's uh, that's something too. I, I said this about Brian in my introduction to him, but with you also, I mean, your your standouts of your career have have always been about change and taking chances on stuff, and you know, watching the the motorcycles because a few times that you've been on the show, I've gone through your site looking at pictures and everything, and and sometimes you forget the library of stuff that's there and how many times you've you've literally gone in a completely different direction and i think that's that's the the valuable thing to take away from all this is like a lot of people will ask us you know in in 25 years like you know did was it always looking for the money and going to, from this to this to this to look for the money it really it really is just about that challenge like what else can i do what can i do next you know could i could i do this could i you know step completely out of my comfort zone and go in a different direction and still make it happen yeah, I, I think I can. I think I can speak for Jerry and Brian that it's. I don't think money comes first. It's, it's. We, you know, we we all share the three of us just share a passion for what we do, and we just love, you know, cutting shit up and making cool stuff, and 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 you know, we just you know we you know we we we're building something, and we need to make something that doesn't exist. Uh, sometimes it becomes a product, but. Uh, you know, it's, it's not for me. It's not I don't get up in the morning and think, you know, I, I certainly don't get up in the morning and think about fiscal responsibility. I, I, just, think about, <laughs> I just think about what's cool and, and <laughs> what I, what I want to build. And, and that's kind of the lucky part of it is that we're, you know, we, we're uh, lucky that people uh, like what we're building uh, or what we're making or what we're bringing to the market. Uh, and and thank God it pays some bills, but uh, certainly not the motivation. Right. You know, it's interesting, you know, bringing up the money, uh, maybe I'll pose this to Brian. And Brian, I think, is a, a great uh, example also of what you said about change, because Brian has reinvented himself a number of times, and uh, especially world's fastest bagger. That was a complete turnaround. And then this whole fairing business, It's it seems to me that Brian really just follows uh, in a serendipitous way things come up and he goes wow i think i'll go there that looks pretty good to me and brian you can answer to this but part of my question here is what about the the money the business because you guys are clearly creatives as they are stating now about how you have to be open your inventors right your creators your machinists but you also have to be good with business and i think in a sense you have to be creative with business can you uh Maybe think about younger people getting their, trying to get their businesses going, trying to take uh, their custom building to the next level. How would you address that? Well, I would first of all tell them to get a uh, great accountant and an even better lawyer. Um, <laughs> honestly, like I thought I could do it all and I couldn't do it all. And in the beginning, um, you know, no bullshit. I was writing the bad checks. I was robbing Peter to pay Paul. I was taking money from one bike, building another bike. I think everybody's done it. And um, yes, we have. It's, <laughs> you know, I was I was talking to Donnie Smith this week, and I mean, Donnie's done it longer than all of us. And he told me early on when I brought my first frame to him to get raked because I didn't know rake from a hole in my head. I brought it up to Donnie Smith in my mom's Monte Carlo, and he's explaining things to me. And he says, "Brian, if you can't get it out of your head, you can do this, but." You really want to make money go do something else and uh <laughs> unfortunately i guess i'm with paul and jerry i couldn't get it out of my head and the greatest thing about this is the people you know and if you don't think if you don't let your ego get over inflated and think you can do it all um you will find people come alongside of you help you out give you um assistance as you go and there's nothing greater i mean i came to your place michael with a sportster chopper and uh, then when I told you I wanted to build the world's fastest bagger, I didn't even know what that was going to be. I just wanted to build a bagger for Discovery. And you looked at me like I was crazy. And uh, we sat for three and a half hours at the Mexican restaurant. <laughs> you said, finally, when I was done, you're like, OK, I, I think you might be wrong to something, Brian. Go for it. <laughs> That's it. But it was a pretty deep conversation. We went back and forth a lot. You know? Yeah, we did. And it goes back a long time. When you brought that first bike, I think it was 1999, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I pulled in there with a Sportster chopper and I mean, it's like taking a Volkswagen and you roll it into Michael's uh, shop and all of a sudden it turns into a Ferrari. It's like, how did that even happen? Yeah. And so, uh, Michael, you have such a talent. Thank you for 
just coming alongside of us and guiding us and always being there just to stoke that fire that is passion in all of us because that's really what it takes. Um, you have to be determined, uh, number one, and number two, it's the relationships, bar none. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll point to Paul and Jerry. I mean, Jerry's bringing 14 bikes to Surgis this year. And I mean, if four of them have my windshield on them, I'll be stoked because that means the best of the best are using my parts. That's, that's super fun for me. And Arlen Ness taught me that when I was really young. He said, Brian, I'll give you a part for your motorcycle. Um, if I could buy you a steak dinner, why wouldn't I do that? I mean, I can't be there, but I definitely want to see my parts in your bike. And mm -hmm. uh, I just never forgot it. Meanwhile, Paul's on the other side of it. He's pushing as hard as he can, and he's building the first ever billet aluminum flare windshield. <laughs> so there you have Trying. it. Cats I don't know if it's going to work. Uh-oh, cat's happened. out of the bag. I thought he was trying oh, to hold on to that one. <laughs> Brian. Oh, my uh -oh. God. <laughs> Bring the lawyers in. <laughs> no, you got to do it right now. Better watch, he might fall off his hammock. If you, if you can't debut in front of Chris Callen and Michael Licker, you can't do it. Well, now if I don't, now if I don't succeed, I'm totally. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just think you fell asleep on the hammock. It'll be all right. Right, right. But do you guys think it's changed so much now that um, you know young guys that are starting off? I know young photographers approach me and ask because it's my my biz is totally changed and. For young people starting off, it's a very, very different landscape than it was 40 years ago when I started. But, uh, but it doesn't mean it can't be done. There's different ways of doing things. How do you think things have changed for the younger people that are starting off? They build their own bikes for friends or for themselves, and now they just got asked to build a bike for money. They still have another job. They want to make the jump. Is it still possible? Can it still be done? It's tough out there, but how, how can, can it be done and how? Jerry, you I have any it, thoughts on that? I, I, I think it can be done, but they got to they got to jump into it both feet. I don't think I think the uh, people that try to do a little bit of it and don't totally get into it and stuff is going to have a lot harder time. I think if they're going to do it, uh, they got to have it have it in their heart and their soul. Or and I think that's the deal with the three of us. Or you'll do a little bit of stuff and then you'll be gaunt. But uh, how many chopper builders did we see build one or two in their garage and then they're gone when the times get tough? Well, the true guys go through the tough times and come out the other side. But I do think they're out there, and uh, it's like with some of the guys that you see, uh, some of these younger guys are so talented, it's unreal. And believe me, they have it. And the technologies improve so much too. So it's. It, if they're dedicated, yes, they can. They can definitely make it. Paul, you have some thoughts on that? Well, you know, um, it's it's. I, I think uh, uh, building custom motorcycles is a hard way to make a living. Um, but you know, there's so the challenges today are the the landscape is changing so much. You know, brick and mortar shops uh, is it's a really tough thing. The internet. Uh, everybody's buying their stuff on internet, right? Everybody buys their stuff on Amazon, and um, I know it's certainly you know at the uh, it's on our minds all the time is how to market our stuff, how to how to reach people. You know, Brian and Jerry and myself um, have all been fortunate enough to supplement uh, our our love for bike building. We've been able to supplement it with products uh, that we sell, and we all have brands uh, of products that we sell through drag specialties uh, uh, and other distributors. Uh, and, and we're fortunate to have these partners uh, around the world that represent our brands. So, but you know, for a young guy uh, coming up, they also, in my opinion, have some advantages. I mean, when Brian and Jerry and I came up, you know, there was no internet, there was no instant, you know, overnight success. There was, I mean, we all had to put one bike in the back of our pickup truck and drag it to shows and, you know, tug on people's pant legs and try to get them to pay attention to us. You know, we, we worked really hard to try to get somebody to recognize our names where, you know, they, they, they have an advantage now uh, that they can, you know, with, through social media uh, and, and different platforms, um, they can reach a large audience with their craft relatively quickly where, where, you know, in the, in the eighties and nineties, it took us years and years and years to do that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily, harder 
it's it's just different and uh you know obviously passion uh is what fuels us all it's our common uh our commonality and and you know it, you know these guys that are that are coming up and trying to build things you know they uh, they're going to do it differently but in some ways they're going to do it the same you know somebody interviewed me a couple months ago and and asked me uh, uh, you know, how I was going to reach a younger audience as I matured or as my brand matured. And, and I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I've already reached them. And, and they were, and the, and the guy who was interviewing me was like, well, no, what are you talking about? I said, well, I said, those guys that are riding around with their shirts off and going to, you know, the board free rally and riding old choppers and stuff. I said, that's the same thing that me and Brian and Jerry did when we were their age, you know? And, and that's exactly what I did. And I know those guys did too. We were all the same exact guys. And, but, you know, maturity happens. And, and next thing you know, they're getting married. And then they're having a baby. And then they're worried about their job. And now they need a bagger because they got to put some luggage in it. And so those guys will be my customers later. You know, everything evolves and changes as you go through the motorcycle life. You know, if, you're, if you have a life that's filled with motorcycles, you know, you're going to evolve through it and you're certainly not going to be doing what at 60, what you did at 16. It's just not going to happen. So, uh, but the evolution of it is the path that all of us took, right? Uh, at least it seems that way to me. Seems that way to me. You know, yeah. th this is, this is something that Michael, I actually want to, I want to put back to you for a second because you said, you know, it's, uh, it, is it still possible? Everything's so much different than it was 40 years ago. But, but really, is it? I mean, there are certain aspects of it that are different, but there's so much of it that's the same because if, if you go back to those 70s, 80s times, there there wasn't the popularity of motorcycles. There wasn't the, you know, like for, for two minutes, we had a, a time where it was, you know, there was a lot of resources being poured into this and, you know, the prices and everything went up. But through those early times, the 70s and 80s I'm talking about, people much much more of the people that were doing it just did it because they love it they had to do it you know f fewer of them were had an eye on a career or anything like that and even like right now i just saw uh nancy weems put up word of mouth back then you know so you you better be good right well even if you consider today like how quick and judgmental social media is it's it's a more severe judgment than the mm -hmm. word of mouth ever was back then because it's today like you do something now today in front of god and everybody everyone's going to know it so i think there's i think there's a lot of parallels too when we look at it i think you make a good point i'm oh, sorry no go for it brian i think you make a good point chris because one of the things that we had going for us is if jerry or paul or i got a bike in a magazine it would be in there for three or four months laying on a on the shop you know counter or whatever and you could you might change the way people are going to do things i mean that would you might be able to set a trend because of the bike you built was that cool and everybody got influenced by it now all of a sudden it's insta famous i mean your bike might be cool for a week uh, unless you post the same bike every week for 52 weeks um you know because the chance of someone seeing it is so small the funnel gets so small but I think what is relevant is still the community and the side that um, if you see somebody who has a cool bike, send them a message on Instagram or send them a message on Facebook. That's still what the answer is. I mean, we're still being social. You might not like everything about that bike, but if you think the wheel or the stance is right, then tell them the stance is right. You know, you can either sit there and be a voyeur or you can be part of the social media that is social media and say something. I mean, have that conversation. It's the same one you'd have at a bike show. I mean, all these people that are so graciously sending messages and commenting are making Chris's show and, and Michael's comments and everybody's comments better. We yeah. like to hear from you in Hawaii. We like to hear you from you in Georgia. We want to know that mailman shitter is no longer full. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know, but, you know, Brian brings up the magazines, and it's an interesting point, of course, with both my background and, and Chris's background, because uh, it used to be like when these guys would bring bikes to my studio in Colorado or shoot it in a studio in Sturgis or Daytona or California or somewhere, you know, th th I was hired by a magazine, by Easy Riders. I'd shoot those things. I was on assignment. My expenses are covered. I'm getting paid for doing this. 
that largely has disappeared. Expense paid assignments are very few and far between anymore. Magazines are disappearing, fewer pages. So kind of what Brian's saying there. But So one thing that's changed is, is this equality, right? Because everybody has equal shot to getting attention on the internet. But also, as Brian pointed out, that could be very short lived. And with this, I don't know if you want to call it Tinder generation, maybe with swipe left and swipe right, you may just be a quick swipe and you're gone and you may only be there for a few seconds is, oh. is often the case, which is tough. And then the other thing is that now it's often left to the builders to hire a photographer or get a friend to do great photography. And then you get noticed more and you get in the magazine. So it's kind of it's kind of changed. There used to be this editorial decision people looking saying which bikes deserve the most attention which are the best now it's a free-for-all you know it's kind of who could get the stuff out who has the best photos who gets picked up and it, it, it's tough so i mean you know and there's it, a, a and lot of good well, it's more accessible but there's some difficulty there as well well and hats off to chris and and uh, your whole team for being able to be one of the magazines that's still standing still bringing us cool motorcycles from all over the world and yet being cognizant enough to embrace technology and bring a show like this to us every week which just connects us together and you were doing this pre-covid this wasn't this isn't like you just jumped on the covid bandwagon decide you were going to go social media you were doing this and i think it's a great thing and so it shows you that at the at the core of motorcycling at the core of custom bikes is community i mean yes, yes. that's the bottom line you know I mean, we're here when someone passes away we're here when somebody um wins the super bowl let's celebrate i mean if if they won and they built the best bike then damn it give them credit build the best bike don't throw out your hater aid keep that to yourself maybe <laughs> you didn't like the color maybe you didn't like the seat then stand on the sideline and shut the hell up okay let's keep it positive when I, I think that's a funny thing too, Brian, because when I when I first came into this, you know, being from a, a little town just north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and and getting into this with you know first couple years just a, a literally a newspaper that we circulated around the, the bike bars here at home, and going the whole way up to this, you know, twenty five years later, I have the perspective to turn around and go, this is really not that big. You know, it's not—it's not that big. This, I—I I better treat all of these people like my family because I've spent a quarter of a century with all of you guys. You know, we—we we watch each other's children grow up. We watch—we watch each other's family members pass away. We watch. Now we're starting to watch each other pass away. So it's absolutely. Hey, baby's family. being born too, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But it, it we, is. We sounded very old, otherwise. It is. It is. <laughs> it is a really small world. You got to celebrate. You got to celebrate getting old in it, man. That's the. That's the thing. What's. What's going on here right now? It's. It's. It's good to be the survivor. It yeah, is. And on. And on another note, what Brian said was big, because to. Um, to give credit where credits due, instead of bashing people. You know, be there. Let them know what's cool and what isn't. You know, if you don't like it, you talk to them about it. If you think there's a, a little bit of rubbing, you, you mention it. But you know, uh, uh, again, Brian's words of, you know, don't be a dick. You know what I mean? Be, be a nice guy. <laughs> support them. Give everybody give everybody credit when they do something good. You know. Right on. We we may be, maybe we're being too hard because uh, I know noticed that Steve Broyles commented that he said back in the '70s it, it was a culture. He said uh, it was chopper craze in the 70s and it was a culture back then. But, you know, I actually think there's a great culture developing right now in, in the younger generation. And I think it's very tight. And I think the communication is amazing. The way they communicate with each other through instant messaging, those kind of very instantaneous things all day long. No matter where they are, they could be in other parts of the world. And, and seriously, I see people in India, in Indonesia, and in Japan, they're communicating daily with people here and commenting and learning from each other. Absolutely. And, and the events that they're putting together and smaller, very cool events, I really do think they have a wonderful culture and amazing communication. Well, I can, I mean, you're talking about, you know, our son, Michael, and, um, you know, the other day I, I was texting with Paul, and next thing you know, we're on the phone and we're talking babies. Every time I go to Sturgis, I stop in the Covington booth and see how the grandkids are doing, what they're building, what's going on. And so you get a connection that way. Um, I was just texting with Antonio Blanco from West Coast Shoppers in Spain 
literally two days ago and he goes how's vanessa how's cargo and he spelled it correctly with a k and it just made me smile it's like it's we're so world. fortunate to be in this industry it's such a small world like you're saying chris um you know we've been through the ups and downs and i think that's what i would encourage the younger generation or people that are trying to get into this even if you're 45 and you just started wanting to build motorcycles understand that just respecting other people is such a big deal and it will take you so far in this world and um i think if you look at arlen ness look at how much we've always talked about how gracious he was donnie smith he'll stand there and as long as you'll buy the rum and coke he'll listen <laughs> <laughs> everybody's having fun you know and and he'll give you some good advice and he'll share a laugh with you and um he'll be honest with you and, and i think that's really the key i mean you know when paul called me about the windshield i was super stoked you know i'm i'm excited for that um you know david covington posted a picture the other day and um i said hey man i have a windshield that'll fit that he goes i already got it and i thought <laughs> how cool is that you know i'm i'm thankful absolutely yeah, yeah you cool. know you you were talking about our culture and uh the deal is is i don't know about you guys but uh I definitely communicate a lot more with my motorcycle family than I do my own, uh, not my immediate sure. family, but everybody else in our family. I see you guys more often. I talk to you guys more often. I deal with you guys more often. That's a bigger family than our actual families, if you really look at it, you know. Agreed. Uh, Absolutely. Because it's, it's just year after year after year, you know, it's it's constant. So, yeah, and like you said, some, the, like it don't matter what age they are, if they want to get into our business or our industry, come on in. But when they do it with respect, they get respect back, you know. Just don't come in saying I'm the best and all this because they get nowhere that way. Yeah. You know, I hope uh, we're a bunch of older guys here, I guess, right? Old white dudes. <laughs> but, um, you speak for yourself, hope, damn it. <laughs> I'm I'm neither an older guy nor white. <laughs> I, see, I, hey, we I, I we don't were. know where everybody stands. I I think I'm the loser in this end. Maybe me or Jerry. I'm, no, you I qualify 60, as old now. You're 50. I, I guess what? We, we were I, I we qualify were for that. Medicare tomorrow. Oh, oh what did you oh, say? What, we were talking that we were talking crazy, the other huh? Day. Yeah, we, we and, were uh, just talking. I hope the younger we people. I'm sorry, Jerry. We were just talking the other day with us guys, and here's something that you could think about. If we didn't know when we was born, how old would you be? Yeah, buddy. And I think that makes us a lot younger than a lot of people. Well, this keeps us young, doesn't it? Absolutely. Paul, what I do get you got to every, say? I get up every, every day. Nobody. Asleep. No, I'm incredibly immature. I've <laughs> <laughs> Tom Tom Kiefer has chimed in. He's wondering. Uh, he's he's concerned that you may fall asleep on us. No, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's on the West Coast. It's still way early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Susie's Suzy, been working me hard. Yeah, yeah, I know that's true. But you know, there's another question this all brings, and that's uh, relevancy, isn't it? What is it? Because I think staying in business is about staying relevant. Any thoughts on that, yeah. Paul? <laughs> so irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you kidding? Yeah, I'm wearing I'm wearing cargo shorts and Levi's cut off jeans or something, but yeah, not relevant. Yeah, I I uh, I, I can say that uh, uh, we we still immerse ourselves uh, in in our industry, and uh, I I love seeing what the young guys are bringing. Um, I also uh, love seeing the new product uh, and the new models that Harley's bringing. So, so at least at least brand wise, we stay relevant, and uh, uh, we like to think that uh, the the stuff we're inventing uh, or, or bringing to market is 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 exciting and so on. I I uh, 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 one of Jerry's customers uh, went and sent me a picture the other day of Jerry. Uh, or David, one of them's building him a bike, a uh, soft tail with one of our fenders on it. And I was so excited to see that they were using one of our fenders. Yeah, I was super. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Made me, made me just made my day. Yeah, that, oh, they, yeah. that, that they were having a good uh, uh, experience with one of our products. Yeah. And 
uh, uh, you know, after after 30 years, it does. It's it's still, uh, 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 you know, we'll be in Sturgis or we'll be in Daytona and we'll be driving through town. And I, I pull up next to somebody maybe with my handlebars on their bike and I can't help but roll down the window and go, man, those are some really nice handlebars. <laughs> you know, like, oh, thanks. You know, and it's no idea. <laughs> I'm so irrelevant. They have no idea who they're talking to. But uh, it's still, I still get a kick out. Of, I every time I get a kick out of it. So, yeah, I don't know if we're, I don't know about relevancy or not. But uh, uh, we still have a huge passion for everything we create and everything we uh, put on our motorcycles. We still like uh, bringing out new products, and we're we're. I think we do do it with the same passion that we did 30 years ago. We, we still get super stoked every time we're bringing something new to market. So, well, I don't know about irrele- sure. irrelevant, but you're definitely irreverent. Right? <laughs> yeah, right, that too. That, yes. that, that's a Paul Yaffe label. You know, here, here's something else. What do, you, what do you guys think about I, I mean, to me, I am amazed at the level of craftsmanship going on with younger people. Their, their skills with shaping metal that we, I, I think we didn't dream about 40 years ago. Shaping, uh, welding just molding metal together. I, I, I'm constantly amazed at what people are coming up with. Well, Any thoughts on that, that, what you see out there? Well, Michael, I think the relevance thing is, is uh, you know, obviously kids are embracing technology. They have rapid prototype machines. They have better access to um, CAD programs to design things, do things. And yet there's um, some of them that are absolutely you know, not going to do all that. And they want to just shape every piece by hand and they're learning um, because of the internet, because of the technology that they have available to them. They can now reach out to some of their mentors or people maybe that they wouldn't have seen before because you had to travel all across the world or all across the country at least to get to those amazing talents, you know? And yet I think you look at guys like Jeff, um, Jeff Cochran and some of those guys, I mean, he's been building his shovel head bikes, his style, his way. And there's relevance in that too, you know? I mean, Sugar Bear is always building the long front end. And that's part of what I think is great about your show this year. And of course, going into next year, it's like a history lesson in motorcycling. Um, It's maybe not who everybody is or who's everybody been the whole time. uh, Because like you're saying, whether it's Covington's, Yaffe's, or us, you know, we've moved with the times. We've shifted. We've, you know, changed. Other people, it's the same every time. And that's, there's something beautiful about that, too. I mean, you can guarantee that, you know, um, Donnie Smith's bikes are always going to have dual rotors or whatever. You know, you just know these certain signature things, and that's the way they do it, you know. Well, that's that's classic, right? That makes it classic. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. You know, it's funny, uh, Larry Moore chimed in that he, he, he wrote, I'm old as dirt, I peaked before I even started. I, I, I know he's joking because he does amazing work. But that yeah. does bring up a question. You know, some people feel like, oh, God, you know, it's hard to get this creative juices going. And I had it and I don't have it anymore. Like for me, I, I honestly feel this is the best time in motorcycling and the best time in my career. Like I just love I, I just love to shoot. I want to get out and try something new. I want to. I want to keep going. Where do you guys feel you are in your careers with regard to that, Jerry? You want to start off? I I think every day is like that. I mean, uh, it's. I don't know. We're just constantly looking for something new to do and trying to stay on the front edge and uh, not be a follower, you know, and uh, just come up with new stuff all the time and. That's why every day, you know, you got so much going on and so much into it that that's why you can't wait to get to work, to get started on it, see what you're going to yep. do that day, what mm-hmm. you're going to create. So are your newest bikes your best bikes? Uh, you know, I would always say best, but uh, uh, there you'll always see something new on every one of them that you probably haven't seen before, you know. Polly, how about you? I, well, I agree. I mean, you know, something something that set us apart at the beginning of our careers is that, you know, we we would we would be building a project, and and we all, you know, Jerry, myself, Brian, all, and and lots of builders. I think what separates a lot of us is the fact that we 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 imagined something that didn't exist, and then we went out and created it. 
um, and uh, which is, you know, like Jerry saying, it's always something new. You know, he's he's looking at something. I, I'm I'm going to guess he probably does what I do. I stare at bikes. You know, I'll I'll spend a day sitting in my shop just staring at a bike. Uh, you know, maybe while one of my guys is doing some work on it or whatever, I'll just stare at things and imagine and come up with new ideas. And um, you know, it's 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 it. it, it, it we work at um, uh, we we constantly want to uh, uh, evoke thought in people, you know, and and it and you know if some of them turn into trends, that's great, you know what I mean. So uh, uh, it, it's great that 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 maybe our imagination inspires other people to take our idea a step farther, and I, I think that's what makes things iconic, and that's what makes things that's what makes trends begin. Um, is igniting passion, you know, across an entire industry. Um, so everybody wants to take uh, a, a unique idea and then elaborate on it, put their two cents into it. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you know, some people get hung up with, oh, they're taking it from me or they're copying me or whatever. I disagree with that completely. I, I, I think if, if, you know, if, if you thought of something and then, somebody else does takes it makes it takes it up a notch and then somebody takes it up a notch from there that's what it's all about that's if that doesn't happen then trends don't begin and and you know the 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 evolution of thoughts and designs don't happen it's 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 always got to be one up and i love seeing i personally love seeing what people uh uh do with a thought and what they where they take it to a oh my god i didn't even think of that wow how did you take it to there i think it's great it's very inspiring Absolutely. You know, Paul, one of the one of the things like what what you just said about you staring at bikes and and thinking about what's possible. That's one of the things I dig about a lot of the stuff that you do because you know, we always talk about how uh 65% of this industry it, or the guy or girl that's, you know, making a bike payment every week, going to work 9 to 5, maybe going to get, you know, a, a set of p pipes or handlebar this year. Or, or maybe this is the year they're finally going to get to a big event. And when we were in Daytona, I think it was, I think it was this year Daytona, or, or it might have been, it might have been in Biketoberfest the last even. But you, you had just come out with this cool little tail light kit, and I can't remember what bike it was or anything, but it was just, it was such nice little changes to clean up the the one model of bike that it was for. You know what I mean? And it was, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was for Fat Pop. Yeah. yeah. And it was it was just it was just the right touch, you know what I mean? That somebody somebody could take that and put that on their motorcycle, and like it would it would clean up and change the whole look of the back end of the motorcycle, mm -hmm. and it, that appreciation for the aesthetics of of every single little part, you know what I mean? And that's that's what I dig about that. Yep, I agree. A lot to be inspired by, right? You know, I, I, I do want to mention that there's a, a lot of builders whose names I recognize and. Um, that are watching the show tonight. And I think it's really cool. One person I haven't seen in years is Mike Puglisi. And I know right. all three of you know, know him, or all of us know him. And uh, certainly Mike builds some fabulous bikes and I hope he still is. And there's also like Noah Ogeen in, um, in Maui, who's watching, Tom Kiefer, uh, Larry Moore, Ray Ray, Joe Gimple, uh, I, the Diagazios. There's a, a lot of people watching, but I hope that there's names that I don't recognize that are young builders. I hope everybody's watching this, and I, I do hope they're watching as well. Well, that's the thing I think, Michael, you know, you're so good at calling out those talents. Um, I remember in, I think it's 2004, um, I did that Cherry Bomb bike that we were showing earlier. And at that time, I wasn't into building old bikes or old style bikes at all. And you said, hey, I'm doing this thing, Bob's back. Um, would you bring a new bike that looks kind of vintage? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, can you do a new twin cam and make it fit this show? Bob it. And I'm like, Michael, that's not even fair. Billy Lane and Willie G and Covington and all these guys are going to be in there. They're all bringing these knuckleheads. And I, now I got to bring a twin cam, so I'm already, <laughs> you know, we're, we're in the weird outfit to the party. I'm like, thanks for that, you know. But, you know, I think that's, you've been that person in my life. You've always challenged me to do something a little bit different and to try it. And, of course, there was some miscommunication, and we built that bike in 10 days. And um, it, to wow. this day, is one of my favorite <laughs> motorcycles. 
Um, you know, and it wasn't a TV show 10 days. It was a legitimate round the clock 10 days to try to get this damn thing done. And, what are you uh, saying? I still love it. You know? It's a great oh, bike. I love that he's, bike. He's, We've all done those shows. We all know how that goes. But but he's, say, he's saying that as sweet as he is, that's the bastard that Michael Lichter is. Because under those circumstances, you still can't I, tell him no. I'm just trying to warn those young guys. They think they're going to go up and talk to Michael, and he's going to give them some great advice. What he's going to do is he's going to push them in the corner, and he's going to put pressure on them, and they have to make a diamond. You know, he got, he got I love me arrested. My, what? I love going to these shows and checking out their bikes and meeting them. And prefer most of them don't know who I am. I'm, I'm presuming, and uh, I try to keep a lower profile. And my name's not on my shirt or anything like that, so I, I just fit right in. But uh, obviously, not fit right. I'm a little older, but uh, I just love going to those shows and meeting those people. Wait, I want to hear this story though. Go ahead. Mike, do you remember Mike? Mike, do you remember me getting arrested for inciting a public riot? Holly, I think I've had you almost arrested on a number of occasions. <laughs> yeah. well, you, you had, I, I know there was New Orleans, me. and let's see, there was Sturgis. Where else? Yeah, you got me arrested in Sturgis for inciting a public riot. Yeah, I still feel terrible Dude, about that. Dude, that's great. Oh, he so does. He feels terrible. My ass, you feel terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can tell the tone of his voice. He didn't feel terrible. Did no, he? he was taking pictures. That's, they were they were walking me down the street in handcuffs, and he was still taking pictures. That's what yeah. I was going to say. Did he drop the camera? Then he didn't feel no, that damn bad. No, he got the See, shot. That, that goes to show Gotta you something shot. never changed. It's all about content. That's it. <laughs> there you go. Photo op. Cool. Uh, oh boy, I, I think this is great. I, I guess I, uh, I believe that Chris has another half of the show to go. Don't you have other guests, Chris? I, I do, and I don't, I don't want to rush you guys at all. So you take as much time well, as you need. Anyway, um, I can get back to my nap now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have anything you'd like to close off with about this or or the exhibition? I know for me, I would like to thank the Buffalo Chip again, and and especially Woody and Marilyn. Marilyn Stemp has been a huge help organizing the shipping. And for those that are out there that don't know, we actually uh, handle shipping both ways to the show, uh, round trip shipping of the bikes, which is awesome. And uh, so I want to thank them and uh, and thank all the builders. You know, we have like 38 builders in the show. And I should say that uh, maybe we'll have them on a different show, but uh, David Yule and Scott Jacobs are sharing the gallery with me this year. So we'll yeah, have three artists so equally cool. split. Next year, I'll okay. do the bigger show of my photography that we had talked about for this year. But uh, how about, uh, hey, here's my uh, free Jerry, plug you have anything David you want Yule to right here. What's that? There's my free plug for David Yule right there. <laughs> oh, there you go. And just the way you said you felt so good seeing your um, windshield on other bikes, I know that David is going to feel great seeing that in the background as well, right? Hey, that's how it works. Yeah. you got to bring it into your house. Well, yeah, I'm looking absolutely. forward to seeing everybody hey, in Sturgis, well, and we are hosting our pre-Sturgis party on in Mitchell on Thursday, August 6th. So if you've not been to that and you're riding anywhere from the East Coast, Please make Mitchell a stop on Thursday. Uh, we'd love to host you for a cocktail or some food. We're going to have some stunters, music. So please come on by. And, uh, of course, we'll be set up in Sturgis at both locations, Black Hills, Harley, and JMP. And look forward to seeing everybody. Awesome. Brian, hey, Jerry, other, how other, about you? Wait a minute. Brian, other than your website, where, where else can people keep track of what's going on at Clock? Uh, the best way is honestly on Instagram. It's just at clockwork, spell clock with a K and works with an E, or our Facebook, uh, which is just Clockworks Custom Cycles. And again, that date is August 6th, Thursday, 5 to 10, pre Sturgis party in Mitchell, South Dakota. Right on. We're coming I just there. wanted to know what kind of grades did you get in spelling in grade school? <laughs> uh, not very good. I spelled cargo with a K, clock with a K, works with an E. All right. A little bit of German in there somewhere. Cool. Hey, Jerry, you have anything to close out with? Yeah, we're, we're looking really forward to the next year bike. Uh, we were really rolling along on that well uh, when I talked to you and we switched gears on that. So that's a really, <laughs> that's a really cool project coming. But we also look forward to seeing everybody there this year and stuff. And uh, I think it's going to be a really big deal. And uh, we got a, a lot of cool stuff, you know, coming up that we're bringing up there, too. Some stuff a little different. Know where they can find you in Sturgis and also online. We'll be at the Harley Diggler in Rapid City uh, 
and uh, also they can find us at Covington's Customs on Facebook or Instagram or our website. Awesome. Right Holly, are you asleep yet? Um, <laughs> nope, no, not asleep yet. First, first of all, I just I want to I want to thank you and. Uh, the Callens for having us uh, and thank you guys so much for trying to keep us relevant uh, in our old age. Uh, uh, also, we will be uh, in Sturgis. Uh, we'll be taking over our Deadwood uh, location at Deadwood Custom Cycle, 10 Lee Street. We'll be there all week with new bikes and parts. And uh, Oh, Mike, I think next year your boxy show should be called Unmasked. I think that would be nice. very uh, poignant. Yeah. <laughs> so, Unmasked. Uh, there you go. Unmasked you edition. Have, you can have that one on me. Yeah. Thank you. I like that. Very good. <laughs> cool. We'll have to do it. Right oh, great. Right. Thanks, guys, so much for being here. And thanks so much for being part of the show. And uh, thank you to Chris and Heather and Missy for all the great work you guys do. Oh, no, it's an, it's an honor. It's an honor to work with you guys, man. Thank you so much for making the show good tonight. Awesome. See you all soon. Thanks, thanks Alia. Everybody thank be you. safe and we'll, we'll thanks, see you everybody. Month. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. So, so, Mr. Lichter. Yes. We're going to be in Sturgis early with you and I'm going to uh I'm going to demand a lot of your time cuz we're going to uh -oh. we're going to we're going to do some behind the scenes stuff and really show people like, since I'm going to be in Sturgis for the first time early for a long time we're going to show people how hard it is to be Michael Lichter cuz people tell Heather and I that we work hard, Mark that he works hard, that we all work hard on this stuff. People have not seen hard work until they see the pace that you keep. So I just want to work with Michael for one week so I can lose the extra five pounds. That's all I want. <laughs> just one week. That's, that's Missy's job. <laughs> you, got, you got to watch Heather. You got to watch her. I know. <laughs> I don't right, know if I can plenty of complaints from Missy, but in the end, I, I think she likes it. Oh, she loves working with you, Michael. She, like, you have no idea how much she adores you. Cool. And she loves so working she's great, with you. She's great to work with. Well, thanks so much, and have a great rest of your show. Oh, it's we been will great for being sure. here, and uh, I certainly love coming on and talking about the exhibition and letting these builders get uh, showcased. It's awesome. We'll see you on Tuesday night on Coast to Coast. That's right, Coast to Coast with Chris, uh, who's also watching tonight. Chris Summer Simmons, who's yep. been posting a little bit tonight, and we'll be together on Tuesday night with a great show. Absolutely. Thanks for being on, Michael. All right. Thank you, guys. So, so great. how do you how do you top how do you top shows like you know I, and I want to give credit to Michael real quick here too like as as he's signing off one of the very first shows that we did with Zoom was completely his doing like we we had come up with this idea and at the time we were doing all of our stuff was all of our stuff was phone in and Michael made me go through with having nine people on one show and him it so was ten. when when we he announced yeah. heavy metal this year that's yep. right and he made us do it and the show has never been the same since it's a whole different level it's so much more dynamic and and, and you know intriguing when you're watching people talk about stuff it's it's just great michael lichter's fault again i you bastard it's not his <laughs> fault it's amazing the things that he's pushed you to do it is kind of really. his fault I was just so happy that you didn't meet the qualifications for a bike this year, though. <laughs> All right. Tell everybody what's going on on social media, Blondie. Oh, everybody's here. Howard Wiggins is here, and Chris Simmons is here, and Mad Stork is here. Um, Karen Moore, Nancy Weems, Lance Baxter, um, Dubois Custom Polishing and Plating. He says, great show again tonight. Social media has been good, so good for the industry lately. I've met some really great people enjoying now <coughs> promoting other businesses while they support ours. Cool to meet so many people I've admired. Never would have happened without us all being part of this community. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, hey, man, this is, uh, this is Chris with Cycle Source Magazine. I want to remind you guys, you're watching Shop Talk like we go live every 9 p.m. Sunday-ish deal wow Ish. it's really just falling apart yeah I've literally the sun has cooked my brain and i can't keep it together it's coming right off the tracks it's a it's an age thing it, it is it it's is an, an age, age thing. thing and you're gonna get there in like two minutes and i'm gonna make fun of you too but hey this is chris <laughs> one more time this is shop talk we come to you live with this program every sunday 9 p.m eastern standard time from the dennis kirk studio 50 floors below the street level and uh, it's our pleasure to be part of this community. Thank you guys for hanging out here with us. We have a whole bunch of show left, so don't go anywhere. 
real quick we're going to take two and two and hear a word from our sponsors stick around we'll be right back with more shop talk this is legendary sturgis buffalo chip are you ready for the best nights of your life at the largest music festival in motorcycling with nine nights of the biggest and best bands in music and extreme racing action this is the ultimate motorcycle rally experience get passes now the sturgis buffalo chip presented by geico motorcycle insurance it's the best party anywhere I joined the military straight out of high school because I felt like I really needed some direction in my life. And what I got out of it was a sense of purpose and more importantly, to be part of a brotherhood. I started riding when I was 21 on sport bikes like most of us do when we're 21 years old. Quickly, I transitioned into love of a cruiser my perfect ride would be with all my buddies with me riding on the coast of the ocean. There's something amazing about having all your friends with you in the perfect scenery all at the same time. My bike is a 2015 Harley Davidson Dyna Fat Bob. My favorite upgrades to it so far are my custom fairing and my 16 inch ape hanger handlebars. My name is Brandon LaBelle and I'm a Dennis Kirk rider. Today, we're headed up to Jason Harm's shop, Live Wire Tattoo. I know Jason, he's been tattooing about the same length of time I have. He's from the school that I was from. I had no idea that there was this chain that we were following. Willie's and Bill's and Atlanta, where you're going to go. Right. All these new ones that sprung up, they don't know us, and we don't know them. They'll never fall into that hole. Look at that, look at that! Oh! I've been to Atlanta once. It's really a fast, fast town. I was told through my network of people that Phil Colvin is the guy that I should go see. Him. He's a tattoo wizard. Memorial Tattoo is where we met up with Sweet Shade Delaney. He's a Marine friend of mine. He wanted to get a Memorial Tattoo. Memorial is what tattooing is all about in a way. You know, people get tattoos to remember certain things or in memorial of loved ones, a memorial of their homes. Hey, this is Chris with Cycle Source Magazine. I want to thank you for watching the flagship show of the Source Media Group, Shop Talk. We go live with Shop Talk every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but it's only one of the many programs we offer from Source Media. In addition to that, Wednesday nights we have a show, Cannonball Chronicles, that looks into the life and times of cannonball racers as they prepare for this year's Motorcycle Cannonball. Thursday night, we have Bike Night Live that goes into the bike night culture, the food, the fun, the hanging out with people, and we even have some live entertainment. Sunday morning, Cyber Swap Meets kick off where we have a sort of home shopping network approach to motorcycle swap meets, and we bring guys on that have live parts to sell right there. All of this in addition to our staples, which are Grease and Gears TV, live on the street from the events and rallies, Grease and Gears Garage, Grease and Gears Garage Roadshow. We look forward to bringing more of this type of entertainment to you from the home of Two Wheel Entertainment, the Source Media Group. And we're back. Right on. I love Sunday, man. I love it. Love, love, love Sunday. We start out early in the morning with Cyber Swap Meet, end up with shop talk at night and by the time we're done we're delirious and ready to start all over with another week but listen I man think we start delirious actually uh, no it's it starts off so strong it's so good like i completely have my wits about me and then the shit just hits the Since fan when? yeah i don't know that that isn't the conversation we had this morning <laughs> Right? Yeah. Like big fish over somewhere, here, seriously? Yeah, somewhere along the line, you lost two hours this morning, if I'm not mistaken. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> Remember? Oh, I'll see you for coffee bright and early tomorrow morning at the shop. Oh. You know what I did this morning? From about 6.45 to him? about 9 o'clock, waited for Chris. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Christopher. I plead the fifth. <laughs> I plead the fifth. I have no respect for time. No, I just, I just Time don't. and money. You either have it or you don't. 
I cried a little bit. <laughs> no, we know that's not true. <laughs> All right, You're like, man. thank God he didn't show up. <laughs> well, listen, so if you guys were watching through the commercial break, one of those commercials was actually a preview of the upcoming episode of Tattoos and Turnpikes. Some buddies of ours put together a killer, killer show, and uh, our little help to push it along is to give you a preview every week. So every week on Shop Talk, we have an opportunity to give you a little inside look on the episode that's coming up. Make sure you check them out, Tattoos and Turnpikes, on YouTube. Um, our next guest coming up is uh, I've known I've known Jason for a long time. So the next guest is, is Jason Holman. I've known him for a long time, and I've watched from afar and seen stuff that he's done, and and you know always thought that he was cool. He's a great conversation, and um, it wasn't until Daytona this year, like he came into the handmade lot, and we started spending you know a good a good amount of time, and like in that I realized that dude is like one of the funniest cats. <laughs> I'm serious. Like he can jump in and out of personality. So he's really either funny, extremely funny, or really like crazy, like batshit crazy. Where no, he just if has he's hanging, wait a minute. If he's, he's hanging like, out with us, I'm going for the batshit crazy option. <laughs> no, but he he is. He's super intelligent, great in a conversation, and it it is no small wonder that as all this technology is going on, and um and we move into where the information age is meeting the communication age, it makes complete sense that he's he's riding that wave too and getting involved with it. So everybody put your hands together and help me welcome to the show, Mr. Jason Holman. How you doing tonight, buddy? I'm very well. How are you? Huh? Is that your van? My van? Yeah. You said you were working on a van a van. No, this is not my mobile studio. This no? is mine. My base, my stationary studio at home base here in Lake Florida. <laughs> Dude, it's so good. It looks so good in there. Thanks, man. I've got I had to turn the the camera down because my ceiling tile, one of my ceiling tiles, has got a little got a little stain in it. So, but you know, we got to keep it classy in Something here. Something like white as paint for. So, <laughs> in 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 your introduction, I had to I had to go all you know un- uncover the truth about your about your multiple personality disorder. I apologize for doing that, but. It's That's all right. They show up. They show up when they when they're most needed. <laughs> Comic relief and to keep me, because I don't think I am saying. I think I am. I think you said I was bad shit crazy. I'm, I'll go with bad shit crazy for five hundred dollars, Alex. <laughs> so let's let's talk a little bit about your history in motorcycles because you actually have uh, you're 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 a generational um, motorcycle afflicted person with this. You 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 weren't you weren't just accidentally found your way in the back door. This is born and bred. No. I, I fought it. I fought it till I till you know the ripe old age of about thirty. I grew up. I mean, literally, um, in Detroit, and we had a li- we had a chopper in the living room and in the basement. I can remember my dad having to pull the front end off the bike because he didn't realize he, he didn't uh, figure out the the turning radius to go up the steps and then out the back door. So the front end had to come off the bike. I mean, I it, it's great. It's been in my blood. Right on. And uh, originally, originally, what was your hometown in it up in up in Michigan, so, right? But was it in I, Detroit proper? I lived in Detroit proper until it was time to go to school. Like like all responsible parents, my parents knew that probably wasn't going to be end very well if I stayed in inside the city proper. So we moved around a little bit. And we ended up um, we had, when we opened our first motorcycle show or shop, rather, it was in Plymouth, Michigan, which uh, it was there until gosh, I think a year and a half, two years ago. It finally moved uh, one town over, but it's still in business. Yeah, yeah. I liked um, I liked so much the uh, the respect that you had. We were talking about Steve Broyles the other day, and and it, the conversation was going on. You know, a bunch of a bunch of guys from that generation, and uh, you were talking about how Steve was, you know, back in the day, and like how how you didn't have the same you didn't have the same approach that that you do with guys like that today back then well, because it was a little no. scary <laughs> no, steve's in listen steve uh steve is one of the greatest men that i've ever known when when my dad passed away two years ago steve was the first person to call me and what people don't know about me being in this business for full time for 18 years uh when i got into actually got into v-twin motorcycles and pulled away from from auto drag racing uh i started going to steve's shop just like my dad went to steve's shop and you know, you find yourself in there. It's, it's a little, it's a little off-putting just because there's an aura in there of a bunch of guys that don't want to answer stupid questions. Is the only way I know how to put it. <laughs> so I would go into Steve's just about every single day, and then I finally <laughs> decided that we were going to 
make this thing be a full-time deal. And when I did, Steve was who I went to and I explained to him, I said, Hey, look, I, you know, I know, you know, me, I know, you know, my dad, um, we want to open a motorcycle shop and I want you to know about it. And I want everyone to know about it and, you know, pay homage to what he had done. And, uh, he was the first one. He put his hand out. He says, as long as you do it right, you know, shook my hand. He says, as long as you do it right, I'll help you all the way. And he has, Steve has helped yeah. me countless ways. Yeah. It's a good man. It's a good man yeah. right there. So, Hey, that, you know, speaking of that, you just brought up the drag racing thing and Mark, I'm not sure that you know this part of Jason. Have you heard any of his story, like where he, where he yeah, came up yeah, through drag bit. racing? a little bit of it. Because he was just telling me the other day, tell everybody a little bit about, about some of your time in, the, in that sport. Well, my fa- I mean, I, was, I started working for the original Ram Chargers when I was in high school, so I had, like, the coolest job in town, and so I knew where all the races were going to be. I knew where, how much money all the races were going to be for, and I knew what parts were in those cars, so I knew where to put my money. And so we would just go downtown and we would race on uh, 12th Street and West Grand Boulevard and go race in front of the Greyhound bus station. And we'd stay out till the sun came up. And just it was just a little bit of gamma, a little bit, a little bit of street racing, a little bit and a lot of fun. I got I got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Now, Detroit, I, I remember this from stories that I, I wrote over the years. But what were the what were the two names, the names of the two streets that are like the most the two most notorious? Yes, it is. So Telegraph divides whether you are in the city or not, and Woodward decides whether whether you're going to be east side or west side because a lot of people don't know this, and you know I have some really good friends that I love to death that are east siders, but I'm a west sider at heart. So like Fab Kevin and Eric Gorgeous and those dudes that I'm solid with and Brian Clem, those dudes are all east siders. I'm a west sider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shots fired. They know it. I give them a hard over, time. I'm over like, the bow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh shit! Well, listen, man. Like I said in the uh, in the intro, you know, you're you're a great conversation. Not not just for this, you know. When, when you come from street racing, drag racing, into motorcycles, your history of motorcycles, the stuff about your dad, and coming up with that kind of environment, and music. Like you are one of the most interesting cats that I've I've had a chance to sit down and have conversation with on any one of these subjects. So, of course, it makes sense that you find your way into a podcast. And let's talk about the beginnings of that. Well, I mean, I honestly went from uh, I had heard I listened to my first podcast. I had never heard about podcasts before. And then Eric Gorgeous turned me on to the, that that space and didn't really do anything with it. And then I listened to, honestly, the Joe Rogan experience. Oh, and I love that show. dude. Week. Oh, yeah. I listened to it one week and a week later I had I'd had my first podcast and the first podcast that I did was called the bottom feed and uh, we just it was me and another friend just absolutely talking out of our asses about things we knew nothing about but it was fun we did it on video and we did it through I don't know if you remember the space Ustream but we did it through Ustream and uh, put it up there for a while and at Ustream's gone now but and I really got serious about it and uh, I bought a little bit better gear in uh in 2012 and i you know i did it for a year i did i did i think i did 10 episodes and it was really tough to book guests and it was really tough to get people to understand the medium and the space and i can remember interviewing darren from liquid illusions and he's like i asked him if you'd do it he says absolutely he'd do whatever and so we sat there and he's like what are we gonna do and i said well, we're gonna talk for an hour he goes, we're gonna talk for an hour and i'm like yeah <laughs> and then in an hour i'm like well that was an hour and he's like damn that was quick yeah so, yeah, Darren and I can just, talk an hour. That's for damn sure. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't think anybody loves the sound of my voice as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can talk the ear off of a dead man. I inherited that from my dad, too. But I just I left him up there for eight years and, and I always wanted to get back into it. And I finally um, just said, screw it. You know, my dad had passed away and I started doing them again. And uh, man, I, I, I don't want to quit now. I, I, I'm actually gaining some traction and. You know, we have a, we have a lot of subscribers and people that are interested in what we're doing. And we talked to we've always talked to interesting people because let's face it, our I don't even have to go outside of our industry to find some interesting people. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, there's we're 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 ripe with them. Absolute characters. But I think that's that's one of my favorite things, man, is like, yeah, everything moves fast now. And there's so much great technology that you can get all the behind the scenes and everything. But when it comes to. You know, a, a show like this or or podcast, when you go in, especially with long form podcast, when you get into long form podcast, it takes a good, 
you know, 20 minutes or so for, for someone to acclimate and sit down and get comfortable. And then it starts to happen, you know, and yeah, that, you that magic, and that magic comes out, man. And like, there's, there's nothing like a, a really well done podcast. There's nothing like it because for someone who loves stories, I, I love the story. I love the backstory. I love finding this stuff out and it's, it's such a great medium. Well, that's what I love about music too, is that I like any song that tells a story, you know I mean? Like, that song copper road that tells a story you know uh, tom petty's american girl that tells a story just about everything bob seeger's ever done tells a story and so i mean it's the same kind of thing i love the story I, and i you know you learn when you first start interviewing people you're having a conversation back and forth and, and you really don't know what you're doing and then you start listening to your podcast back which they say is the worst thing you can do but it's the only <laughs> way you can learn to be critical of them be better and you have to learn to listen to understand but still have a response instead of just listening to respond. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get that, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I rarely hear anything you say. <laughs> Over the years, I've learned uh, one of my greatest accomplishments is you sound like Charlie Brown's teacher to me whenever you talk. We're like, a, we're like an old married couple at this point. That's <laughs> that's the deal. Yeah, everybody's got one of those dudes in their life, right? That's yeah. just, you guys are just so arbitrary towards each other, but you couldn't do it without them. It's kind, right. it's kind exactly. of creepy. It's kind of creepy, too, because I don't really go for big beards, you know? <laughs> Not a beard guy, are you? No. <laughs> Great. I'm glad I shaved. <laughs> so, um, speaking of the technology part of this, you know, um, you were telling me about a mobile solution that you're also working on. Where does that fit into the picture with this? Well, so one of the things that I found is that trying to get people to come to my studio is a, is a difficult task. And then trying to set up a mobile, you know, I can take my equipment wherever I want to go, but it's it's a little clunky and it works wherever you put it. But there's the risk of damaging it and those types of things. So we looked at what kind of solutions are out there and I've I, I'm not a van guy, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I, it's just not my thing. So we looked at getting a trailer built. So we're going to have a trailer built. It's going to have, uh, it's going to be set up for kind of uh, TV and, and just audio. There's a green room in the front with, you know, a place to kind of convalesce or, you know, kind of do show prep. There's an editing studio in it. And then the backside is going to be uh, a mobile, mobile studio that, that has the ability to, um, still have house a bike or two so we can travel with it and when we go to places it, i won't have it for sturgis but i will have it in uh, i'll definitely have it by daytona and it's going to allow me to you're not going to be able to give me a reason i mean you wouldn't but someone else can't say ah i don't want to do it over the phone or yeah, yeah, i can't yeah. this to me well can you get in, you know you have to ask people to get in your van which is kind of creepy but i can say hey you want to get my trailer? that makes it so much better it makes it so much better if i say hey man you want to come spend some time with me in the van but listen yeah. if you want to talk about if you want to talk about weird and creepy and shit you just use the word what did you say convalesce convalesce yeah convalesce i had to look that up while while you were on screen just look it the, up that fast huh you, looked up, you didn't like did you look it up that fast <laughs> oh shit so um, let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the show now. So you talked about the history and getting into this. So the uh, the garage built podcast, right? Where 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 does this start? What's going to be the what's going to be the premise? What is you know what has been the what set set the mission statement for everybody? What are you going to do? Well, so that's a good question. And it, see, I look at you as an arbiter of information. Like you're the guy that, I mean, you're the last man standing and, and it's all because you worked harder than everybody else and you don't have any quit in you. You're, you've got that, got kind of that ilk. Um, you can ilk say, me, you can uh, say stupid. No, I'm not saying <laughs> stupid. I mean, I don't have any quit either. I mean, there would have been a lot of people who would have rolled up the, the sidewalks and went home. But <laughs> the, the reason why I'm, the, the way I see me is to kind of break things down. And get into the minutiae of the, of the personality and the person because you know as well as I do um, everybody like you said 20 minutes in you start getting somebody kind of kind of open up a little bit relax you know I'll give them a shot or two and, and kind of get them to chill out and they start telling stories and I want to I want to break things down and be kind of an an arbiter of people so you know you're you're out there you're the one that's championing all of our events you're the one that's out there championing all the 
you know, the space that we need to do what we want to do. You keep everybody in line as far as, you know, who's who and where's what and all those things. You're the where's Waldo of, of all the, the companies that you're the you're the guy they got to go to to advertise. I want to be the guy where I introduce you to the actual person behind that, you know, peel back the layers of, of, of the curtain you know, like Wizard of Oz and, and, you know, get somebody to sit down and get them to talk and get them to relax and open up. And, you know, I want to hear about, you know, you just had Brian on. Brian's a good example. I, everybody knows his windshield. I want to know, you know, whose idea was it? You know, was it his? Was it his team's? Was it how did that, how did, how do you parse it out? Walk me through the process. And, and like you said, it's long form. So my goal is to obviously make this a part of what I do professionally um, and continue on down the road and try to be somebody that people want to be on my show. People, you know, strive to be on my show. I mean, you know, kind of a very Joe Rogan esque. I mean, he's he's got a, a model there that works for for the kind of conversations I like to have. I mean, uh, I was criticized very early on by somebody that I'll just may, remain nameless. It doesn't matter. But he was somebody that was an editor in chief of a big magazine for a long time, and he's very well respected. I respect him. But I asked him to be on and he, he thought, nah, he goes, I'm not going to do it if you don't have like he wanted, you know, structured, you know, we're going to do this bit and then we're going to do this bit and then we're going to do that bit. And I'm like, man, you, why can't you just sit down and have a conversation? You know, right. and as it turned out, eight years later, here I am, I'm still doing it. And albeit with, you know, a big gap in there where I, I didn't produce any content, but I did keep it live so people could listen to it. And and now it, it works. You know, it's like uh, I think it was a little bit. Of, I'm not I'm not an outlier. I'm not. I'm not innovative at all, but I was. I wouldn't say that. Well, I, I would say that we were the first like custom motorcycle podcast that I'm aware of. I can't find anybody that, with older episodes than mine. That's all custom stuff, but we have we are out of the starting blocks before a lot of other people. So we're kind of comfortable in that space. And and I'm and I'm like I said, I like the sound of my own voice. So I you know it works well <laughs> as long as people like listening to it. I'll keep yammering on <laughs> well and i i should mention too like this is this is part of what makes you a good writer like that part of your personality is what makes you a good writer and especially a good tech writer you know you just did a an article for cycle source magazine but you've done them for other magazines and part of what's good about reading your stuff is because you do have that kind of hunger to break things apart you know and make it and make it understandable and uncover those things for people and and that's why i really dig like you know the the article that you did for, for last month's cycle source, it may have seemed like a really, really simple thing, but I've turned a dozen guys onto that. I've, I've sent that personally, sent that article to 12 different guys. I even had one of them call you, a guy down yeah, in Florida. Yeah, yeah, you know what up. I mean? So I, I think that's I think that's part of your personality. Like it absolutely makes you an innovator because you understand you understand that dynamic. You know, you understand the 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 need to have more than just that surface level like you were saying about Brian. Like one of the best parts the of the story about Brian and the and the flare windshield is like literally they went to to wind tunnel testing with that. You know what I mean? And like hearing that whole story of that part of development was killer. Yeah, and you know, <clears throat> like I've said this for a long time. I'm really good friends with a lot of really talented people. You know, Paul Weidman, very good friend of mine. Cody Childress, very good friend of mine. Um dude Warren Lane is the guy's an oracle. When you go down to his shop and you spend a day with him, as I have, you don't walk away from there doing anything other than go, well, what the hell just happened? Like he gives a clinic while you're there, <laughs> you know? And so people don't, people don't realize that. So I'm a fan first. I've always been a fan first. And I've been criticized. If I've been criticized for anything is that, you know, I didn't make my own mids or I didn't make my own bars. And I'm like, you know what? I don't have to make a set of mids because Boosted Brad makes the mids I like. I don't have to build a set of bars right. because Lance out of Thrash and makes the bars I like. So what I'm good at is putting all that stuff together and making it work. So it's the th same thing I do with, with the, the magazine articles, which, by the way, thank you very much. I mean, I truly love writing. That's something that I love to do. And uh, you giving me an opportunity to do that again is, is fantastic. Oh, dude, you're helping us. <laughs> well, I get it. But, you know, I, that's, I've always said, like... Um, getting back to my other point is like, I'm, I'm the guy that's going to put everything together. Like I can talk to pretty much anyone, you know, I can talk to, I can talk politics. I can talk, you know, religion, you know, people say, don't talk politics or religion. I say, listen, talk to everybody about politics and religion. But when you're listening 
listen to understand, not to respond. Mm -hmm. And you can actually have some discourse because at the end of the day, when something bad happens to a community, everybody in the community feels this, a similar thing. And so the motorcycle industry is the smallest billion do dollar industry I can come up with. So when something bad happens to somebody inside our industry, we all feel something. It's not the same for you as it is for me. You know, American Iron going out, that's oh. not the same for me as it is for you, but it's bad for all of us, right? Or it's yeah. negative yeah. or whatever it is. I, I, we don't have to unpack that. But what I'm saying is that I like to use other people's stuff and make it work. You know, there's plenty. Uh, Paul Weidman makes way better parts than I can think of. So I'm just going to buy his stuff. And you, you, you get what I'm saying on that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't, have to, you don't have to reinvent the wheel to put a set of them together with a cool motor and... And exactly. come up with your own design of a motorcycle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do. To spread I, the wealth also. I mean, it's, it's exactly. nice to have a guy like you that has the reach that you have that's nice enough not to want to be everything all at one time. I mean, not I'm not a bulldog, man. I think right. that's bull, bulldogging things. I try to, you know, when I was teaching high school, I was trying to teach kids, you know, lots of different things. And, and it was like, look, you have to identify what you're good at and then work on that. And if you do that, and you're happy doing it, then you'll be fine. And that's the space that I occupy. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy writing. Uh, I have lots of goals that I want to that I want to do with this. Obviously, at some point in time, this has to this this has to fill the coffers so that I can do that. But I'm our, I'm smart enough, and I read enough, and I want to learn ten dollar words, and I want to use them and make people <laughs> have to Google shit while they're talking to me. But I do that so that I don't come off as a dumb dumb because honestly, that's what I am. I'm not being self deprecating in anything other than just it's just a fact. I'm a dumb dumb. I got through high school. I figured it out how to get through high school. Graduated with honors, but I never took a algebra class ever. You know what I mean? I don't. If somebody gave me a held a gun to my head and told me I had to do an algebra program, I'd just say pull it. We're done. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I don't have an answer for that, but I have an answer for a lot of other things. Well, and it, it comes down to like, a, you know, one of the, the common phrases you'll hear me say is how motorcycles saved my life because I was on a really bad track. I didn't care about learning shit. And I mean, just until recently, and it's funny because it was Steve Burroughs that taught me this. I'm so bad at math. Like, first of all, I dropped out of high school in 10th grade. I'm so bad at math and was terrified because now I'm doing machining work. And to use a lathe and a mill and like and do these things efficiently, you really have to have some math, you know, especially when it comes to reading micrometers and calipers and everything else. And I was confiding in Steve Broyles about this and I was like, dude, I'm so upset because I've got my first mill and like, you know, I'm bad at math and I, re I really want to learn to read the equipment and not rely on everything being digital and doing a conversion. And he goes, well, you don't need math to read that stuff. And I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, the whole thing is math. And he goes, no. Nah. He said, you know how to count money, don't you? And I was like, well, yeah, money's the one math I can do in, like, all abstract fashion. And he said, well, here you go. He said, "Here, here's the deal. $10 is one inch. And I'm yeah. like, okay, what do you mean? And he broke that down for me like that, how $10, if you take all the pennies in $10, if you take all the dimes in $10, if you take all the every every denomination in ten dollars, you can apply that to the micrometer, the caliper, and every other machine. And immediately, I walked away knowing that. And it was the delivery of information in a in a fashion that was palatable to me. And that's what we're talking about here with the kind of the kind of media and the kind of way that you're delivering that stuff. Well, let me give you a, let me to play on what you were just talking about. So I was I moved down here in 2010 and I started teaching high school auto shop and I had to teach micrometers and I had to it's my kryptonite I mean I the anxiety the level of anxiety I had was I was reading the book and reading the book and reading the book and trying to articulate that in a way to the students to where I didn't come off as a dumb dumb because that's what I am and we used we used the exact analogy that you used it's it's if you put it out in the money I can count money <laughs> like, you know, and, and I learned, you know, I did car sales for a little while. I learned that, you know, you have to be able to count and use a calculator and all those things, but it's all tools, right? Everybody has a tool bag and let me rephrase that. Everybody has a toolbox <laughs> and the tools that you have in your toolbox need to help you get through whatever it is you're going through. And so, you know, if you, you've got to have the right kind of 
pieces and parts in there. If not, you got to have a friend, you know, you got to phone a friend and, and get some help and get some scaffolding and figure it out. You know, you just got to figure it out. Mark, I think for a second he was he was confusing tool bag with trick bag. I don't know. Toolbox and trick bag. All I caught out of that whole thing is everybody's a tool bag, which yeah, works I know. for me. I, I, that's where I was afraid everybody was going to go there, right, <laughs> right, right in the gutter, right. Yep, that's leave it to us. I'm good with it. Right on, man. Well, what's uh? So, um, what's, what what show number are you on? Where can we where can we go next to uh we've got we've produced thirty four episodes. I have two more episodes coming coming out that I that I'm gonna release this week. Um both one of them is uh is kind of a home builder guy and the other one is well they both are kind of home builder guys, but one of them is Kyle Ray Rice, and that kid's ridiculous. That kid makes me feel like a dum dum <laughs> all over again. And so he's just there's these guys, there's so many talented people. You know, and yeah. so I've got two episodes that are in in the can that I've got to I've got to run through the run through the production cycle, and um, put the commercials in in their place. And we did just launch our website this weekend too, and it's uh, garagevillepodcast dot com. And then we are um, off to Sturgis, and I plan to come back from Sturgis with at least uh, five or six podcasts. I know I'll do one with uh, Boosted Brad. I know I'll do another one with Cody Childress from Whoville Speed and Custom. Um, I'm going to try to pin James Carter down. He's a seat guy, does a lot of stuff for Covington's Customs. Um, but even then, I mean, you know, Jeff G. Holt, I'm going to try to pin him. I don't know if we'll be able to pin him down that, you know, that week, but he's been on a couple times. He's some of my most downloaded episodes. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good conversation, too. He has, he's seen a lot of stuff, too. Yep. <laughs> I've got, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a card. He's coming to do, um, we have that show coming up in December that we moved from June to December, uh, Central Florida Wheels of Steel, that's the motorcycle show, and he's our MC, our, our, our you know kind of our show ambassador for that week. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my stuff together here, but <laughs> let's let's talk about Sturgis for a minute words. because this was our big uh, this was our, our big push tonight was having Mike on. You know, we're all gearing up for Sturgis Live and everything. What what's your do you have any anxiety about it? Are you I mean, where do you sit I have personally? Some reservations, but I mean, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I get a lot of shit for this, but I am um, somebody that I enjoy. I get on, I get motorcycled for you know forty to fifty hours a week here pretty easily. Sixty hours when or more when there's something going on, we go to you know we go to Sturgis and. And I don't get a chance to ride as much because I look at it as like a, a high school reunion. I get to see Pat Patterson uh, this year. I'm going to see Paul will be there this year. You know, those are all my friends that, that that I love and respect and that have been in this this deal with me for so long. And uh, it's a it's a reunion for me. So I get to see all my people, you know, in one place. And that's important to me, too, to spend face time with them. So but we're going to actually if. if if there's no, not a lot of vendors or whatever the situation may be, uh, we can social distance on our motorcycles. That's what we do. And we'll, you know, put our helmets on and we'll go out and, and see some things that I haven't seen before. I, I will tell you, I've been to Sturgis uh, four times or something like that in the last 10 years. And I've never gone to see any of the real, like the monument type things. I'm always kind of doing something. I'm either writing an article or going over to this show or doing that, whatever. I enjoy this part of what the motorcycle industry has to offer very much. I like contributing. I like being, you know, I've always said like for my career, I'm not a Billy Lane. I'm not a Jesse James. I'm not a, I'm, I am I love all those guys and I love their work, but I want to be the guy that when, when my career is, is winding down that I want to be the guy that's in the back of the room. I play to the back of the room first because those are the dudes that are in it with me. I mean, Jerry Covington said something about in the earlier interview about, dudes that come in and out of the industry and i have a real problem with that i have a real problem with somebody who you know cherry picks stuff when things are good and people can get mad at me all they want but i've been poor and broke and without things and my kids have not seen me at certain events while they were growing up so that we could do this right so that Amen. i get to a certain point where Amen. i can get to a point where i can take a little bit of a breath relax a little bit so I get kind of pissed and put off when I see dudes come in and out of this this thing with you know one one foot in the, in the water, and, and so I'm I'm very uh, I'm very vocal about that. 
and you can get mad at me if you want. Everybody no, you can. know what? Actually, dude, I'm really glad to hear you say that because I sometimes feel like a, a sour old prick. You are. Well, okay, honey, thank you. <laughs> That's my job. Um, but I, I feel that way because I feel like there, I feel like there's a commitment that has to be made to this too. And you know, the three of us mm-hmm. sitting here, like we work our asses off, and it and it's not always it's not always been good. I mean, no. Jesus, the early days, the early days of the magazine, the places that we slept and the shit that we yeah, did, the ways we got mm-hmm. there to do this stuff was yeah. was amazing. And I think that was that was a time honored rite of passage for it for the good times that when you did get to the good times that they meant so much and i'm afraid that it turns into metaphysical junk food you know and the sad part about it is in some senses we've actually had to go take jobs to keep doing what we wanted to do you know like you know. everybody has yeah. And, yeah. and you know and it's just a matter of, i've never not done this since i started doing this and that's when i said earlier when we first got into the conversation is that there's been lots of times where I probably said, you know what, this isn't working. You're an idiot. You know, like I said earlier, I'm a dumb dumb, but I don't have any quit in me. If I want to do something, I've been married to the same woman for 26 years. I'm 47 years old. We got married while she was in high school, and it wasn't for any other reason. That that's just what we're going to do. So I don't have a problem with commitment, and this is what I want to do. And so I'm going to do it hell or high water. And, you know, I'm trying as hard as I can to keep the lights on and some days are better than others but when somebody it wants to marginalize that and you know i have dudes that come in my shop and i don't even I, i'm real and i'm honest with them about this so i'm not saying anything now that i haven't said to them if you're building bikes in your garage that's great buy your parts from me or buy your parts from another retail organization and it's fine but you shouldn't be doing labor out of your garage and taking money for it i pay ask steve Royals what he pays for his for his garage keeper's liability insurance. And if I'm going yeah. off on a tangent, I shouldn't go off no, on no. it. Don't stop. But it's a fact. I'm in an 8,200 square foot building with two full-time employees that work wrenching in the back, one in the front, plus myself. I mean, there's overhead there. Mm-hmm. When someone comes in and wants a deal, it's like, on what? I'm giving you a deal. The deal is, I'm here. I sell squares. <laughs> How many do you want? Yeah, I'll give you a deal. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be a jerk month. about it, but I, I learned that from, from, from Steve Broyles more than anybody is that don't if you want to compete with me on a level playing field that's fine but don't start a business in your garage and then keep doing it that long mm-hmm. and, and you know and you can get mad like i said people want to get mad at me they get mad at me you can have a conversation with me i'm easy to find and i'll explain it to you in a nice manner to where how you shouldn't be doing that you're not licensed by the state you're not insured you're not you know what i mean yeah. i am i put in the work well and the biggest thing about that man and i mean speaking from a magazine thing since you brought that up earlier about you know american iron going away this one that one you know, it's it's easy to just go on to social media and, you know, shoot from the hip and yep. whip off an opinion and a criticism and a this and that. But when you're doing when you're doing the uh, you're occupying the space of media delivery and it's what you do, it becomes a whole different proposition. Yeah. Well, you can't just talk out of your ass. No. You can't you can't th- you can't not think about the implications and the impact the several ripples along the way mm-hmm. and what and what that's going to do you know and oh, there are so many days where he'll be like i need to say this or i'll be like i need to say this and yeah you really can't you, well i mean you can but you probably shouldn't yeah. because is it really worth it you know or or are you just are you just talking because you're hot right now and after right. you think it through it's like well look that's just it's superficial anyway you know but yeah, the- yeah but there's a difference between what Heather's saying. I get what you're saying. Like everybody gets angry and, and pops off like a cork every once in a while. But what I'm talking about is real substantive conversation about, look, we're trying to make a living here. Yeah. We're trying to support our suppliers. You know, when all these things happen with the lockdown and not going off on a tangent of that, but trying to explain to people who had, you know, pedestrian jobs or government employees or work for a giant corporation that they were just sent home with their laptop, they get their check and they get to wear their fuzzy little slippers and you don't have to clean the the sleep out of their eyes. My bike shop was still open because we were essential, right? We didn't qualify for any of that other stuff and we had to keep the lights on and, you know, and I'm being, uh, you know, I'm being uh, demonized for not wearing a mask or, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's like, look, we, we have to keep going here. This is you either have to lead, follow, or get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, and in, in a lot of the same ways that it, it is exactly what we were saying, man. Because you know, in our end of the world, we'll watch a lot of these people come, just like you're saying, in and out. They bounce in and out because they're influencers. 
you know, and they're they're the hot product of the day. So our industry will will pour resources at them just because they have this glorified following when same deal you know we're kind of the brick and mortar we're the ones that even in the bad times we're rah rah motorcycle rah rah biker culture you know what i mean and like those those influencers come and go like the tides do but it's it's really like the core that we're talking about in all of this the core people that understand how to fix the motorcycles how to build the motorcycles how to ride the motorcycles and what's important about our communities and our cultures you know that for me that was the that was one of the saddest things about losing magazines like Ironworks, American Iron. You know, going back to going back to Ironworks, like that Dennis Stump, you know, coined the phrase the Thinking Man's Harley magazine. I thought that was the coolest shit when I was young, man. You know, and and we've lost a lot of that. Yeah, we have. And then you have, uh, not to besmirch anybody, but whatever. Like I said, I played at the back of the room, anyways. You have you know Easy Riders now just a name. You know, it's mm. basically the affliction jeans version of a ta- coffee table book for for motorcycles it doesn't it's i don't know it's a, you, you can it if it was if it stood on its own if it came out and it didn't have somebody else's somebody else's name on it that had a legacy attached to it it'd be fine but i've got a stack of easy riders taller than me that you know that are different it's a different thing there's still tech in there and that shit meant something to us yeah, now you know it just seems I mean? like Easy Rider's just looking for a way to steal a couple more dollars out of your pocket. Dude, you know? that is, um, that's right. a money crab. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Totally Would agree. I love somebody to come in here and offer me oodles of cash for this joint? Yeah. That'd be fun to yep. think about for a second, but then what am I going to do? You know, I like Good. being kind of the puppet master of my own little dance here, you know. And like I said, I'll, I'll always play to the back of the room. My dudes know who they are. And I've got a lot of good friends, man, that, that uh, this is what I do. This isn't just what I do for a living. This is what my life is. My life is motorcycles. And it's not just riding. It's not just working on them. It's talking about them, thinking about them, dreaming about them. You know, my best friends don't live hardly anywhere near me. I've got a, you know, one of my best friends lives in Texas. I have to go see him, you know, on the way to Sturgis and take him up there. My other best friend lives in England. You know, I got another one that lives in Australia. And it's all because of motorcycles. Yep. Hundred nope. percent. You know, you guys, Chris, Heather. Yeah, you know, the, how often do we get a chance to break bread and be in the same room with each other? Thankfully, we have you know outlets like this where we can do these types of things. And, and God love you for producing content like this and giving us opportunity to, to get in each other's faces and see how everybody's doing. But man, you know, it's just it has to be. It it has to. We have to move. We have to keep moving those chains, and we have to come up with new innovative ways to do it. But I'm I'm concerned about the people that. Um, that have got us to this point and then what they're going to do to get us to the next point. You know, you got dudes like Paul Weidman and, uh, and, and just producing new product after new product after new product. You've got guys like boosted Brad, um, death metal racing parts and that stuff. Those guys all, they're making parts, Mm -hmm. right? And those are the parts that I sell. I, I told Paul a couple months ago, I'm like, man, I feel like I'm antiquated having a, a brick and mortar bike shop like you don't need me you can go direct to the direct to the manufacturer and yeah. some of these people what the, the, the direct to manufacturer doesn't realize i get it they're they're upset about the amazons and and other things that that have happened we can't put that smoke back in the bottle yeah but I'll, I'll give you an example you guys are you, you guys aren't with this company but there's i'll just tell you what happened so a couple years ago we all know we can I'm not going to name any names, but you know what I'm going to talk about. So a couple years ago, we have this giant conglomeration of of venture capitalists that swoop in, swoop up a a giant chunk of our motorcycle industry. And then they buy a couple other things and they lump them all together. And I've got people, I have three different people I can buy from to get the same part. And they're going to, they're going to pull it out of other people's warehouses that are closer to me. And my salesman that comes in here every month to make sure that I'm okay and I'm alive and that do I need anything? Can I do any returns for you? Is going to get out cut out of that, and they're all owned by the same parent company. Mm-hmm. And then they have the biggest warehouse in the state I'm in, in the southeastern United States, two and a half hours away here in Daytona, and we know who they're ta- who I'm talking about. And, and you know, if you think that conglomerate was bad, wait till you see the new one that's just about to happen. I'm, I'm, I can I can hardly wait. <laughs> it's it's being it's being assembled right now, right behind the scenes, just behind the curtain. There's sure. a new there's a new mega mega devil coming. So 
it's going to. The bottom line is here is that you know we can. We're not even belaboring anything. We're we're actually having a conversation about what's what's real and what's factual. And I'm in the throes of the retail side of it and the service end of it. And I'm trying to occupy uh, occupy a certain amount of space on the interwebs with you know my content stuff. But you said it before about people just kind of popping up out of nowhere and having a like a killer social media deal. That's a house of cards. Yep. And you and I know, and all the people that we know, I'm seeing the people that are posting over here on the side, like that are chiming in. There's some players over there that know that you can, re, you can, you can recognize real. Real recognizes real, right? Doesn't that? I don't yep. think I heard the, the, a rap song or something. You know what I mean? Well, and I think that that was one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on here too, because like the the best of this right now is the is the honesty you know i love i love that we live in a an age of citizen journalism and everything else because it's really taken away the veil of bullshit for a lot of stuff i mean there's still plenty of bullshit let's be serious yeah. but it's taken away a lot of it because you know this whole community that exists in this digital universe like they will they want cover that bullshit in two minutes flat you know so you're oh, not yeah. gonna, it's like- you're not going to put that same smoke show on anymore in this so the honesty is we're really in a time now where you can actually tell the truth you can bust balls and keep it real like that and and it's just it's just what is you know yeah i don't want to be friends with anybody that's not going to have the ability to pull me off the side and say hey man what you all right you need a hug you good you're kind of you're being an ass and at the same time i don't want to be friends with somebody that i can't do that with right and so the, the circle of people that we that we orbit with and through all have the ability to do that to each other and peeling back that curtain and being more vulnerable to letting people see what you really are. I mean, you know, it used to be, you know, I was thinking about this earlier today is like, you know, I took a lot of heat because I, I wrote for a certain magazine for a certain number of years. When I built my bike, I didn't feel that it was the kind of bike that should be in that magazine. So I reached out to you and I'm like, Hey, what do you think of this? You know? And you're like, yeah, I love it. I want to, I want to put in my magazine. So, I had, you know, I let you run my ma- my personal bike in your magazine because I thought it was a better fit. And I took a lot of shit for that. And like oh, I said, and so did I. Yeah, and and look man, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm on team us, team you, team me, everybody in here. Everybody that's contributing that has a real like vested interest in what we're doing, moving things forward. I don't care. I don't bulldog things and, and no one should. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I always kid around and say, look, you can, I'll show you, I'll show you my P and L if you want to see it. You know what I mean? Like I don't have anything to hide. You know, I'm, I'm not that kind of guy. And if somebody's really needs help, then I want to help them. If you get a young guy or a young girl that's getting into this business, man, you know, yep. get over here. I'll show you what it's like. Here's a, <laughs> here's a shop towel and there's a hoist and let's go make some mistakes, you know, that you can learn from. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you coming on with us tonight. I'm super looking forward to uh, to where all this goes next for you and um, and anything that we can get involved in. I know we're going to we're gonna help promote the show at the end of the year, and hopefully we're going to do some more stuff with that that we'll be talking about here in, in short order. But tell everybody where they can keep track of you, at least one of your personality, your main personality. My main personality? <laughs> you, can follow, you can follow this 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 lovely, handsome gentleman at Speed Metal Built on Instagram. That's the best place to find me. That's where you'll find all my uh, my funny posts and things like that. And you can check uh, the Garage Built podcast is the other one on Instagram. But it, I kind of find that to be redundant, but I haven't figured that out yet. But the, the best way is to go to any, go to iTunes, Spotify, um, iHeartRadio. Our podcast is there. It's the Hell on Wheels Garage Built podcast. I know the name is long, but... I'm always somebody that's planning ahead. So the Garage Built podcast is kind of the network. And the Hell on Wheels podcast is, is what we're actually producing right now. And uh, in hopes to use this mobile studio to do other things and, and, and build some more content. So, and I'm on Facebook, but that's really, you know, if that's where you go to argue with me I'm about politics. <laughs> <laughs> and I love to do that. I'll post things up and then I take it down a few hours later just once I get everybody riled up. Right on, man. Well, listen, I'm definitely looking forward to spending some time with you in Sturgis. We want to get uh, we want to get you on camera with us a little bit out there, and and maybe actually get to break away. And, oh yeah, absolutely, dude. No, no kidding. Like you, you and Xavier are doing that bit in Daytona. I pissed my pants laughing about it. it was crazy. Yeah, so he was fun. Yeah, Dito, he Dito, Dito will make an appearance in uh, in Sturgis for certain. 
<laughs> right on. So that's it. Sturgis, next stop, man. All right, listen, thanks for being on. Um, we'll catch you out there and definitely spend some time and break some bread. And, Absolutely. Uh, Thank you for having me on, Chris. I love you, man. You're a great dude. You've always helped me out. You've always been there for me. Anytime that, you know, anytime I needed anything, I appreciate it. And check us out. Uh, make sure we go to wheel, cfwheelsofsteel.com. That's the, that's the custom motorcycle show. So yeah, that helps. I think we had that up there real quick. Yeah, I, I have the right, up in the comments. I have the right site up. Yeah, there it was go. perfect. Cool. Perfect. Thank you. Dig it. Yeah, so we're going to be looking forward to that, too. All right, man, we'll catch you in Sturgis. Thanks All again. Right, well. All right, see you, buddy. All right, so we are way over time tonight, but it's, I mean, with that many great people on the show, how can you even, how can you even watch the clock? Right. You know? Um, but it's way past my bedtime. There was a it clock. Is. There was a clock. Oh. Say goodnight, Christopher. <laughs> Good night, Christopher. No, seriously. Good night, John I want to I thank you guys one more time for tuning in. This is Shop Talk, 90 to 120 minutes, all the bullshit we can fit. We go live every Sunday night. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time through the courtesy of the Dennis Kirk Motorcycle Studio, 50 floors below the street level here at Cycle Source Magazine headquarters. Um, please check out all of our shows that we're doing through Source Media. Support the people over at Chopper Town because Chopper Town has given us a really, really big opportunity to do more of this as we are all stuck in and in need of contact with other people who understand the kind of insanity that only happens when you're possessed by the two world lifestyle so thanks for being here with us crew right anybody, on. anybody have anything else to add see us in sturgis we got a ton see us of in stuff Sturgis got lots and lots and lots of good stuff going on if you can't make it to sturgis you can watch sturgis live we do real quick breakdown our bike show sunday the full throttle bike show monday amca day vintage day monday Vintage, you're going. See, Sorry. I have it out of order now. Oh. You're, you're killing me. You're Sorry. killing me, Smalls. You're literally killing me. What Monday and Monday? How can you have that out of order? <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday, our run, run to the line. We're going up Van Acker Canyon. Um, we have a cool Friday cool thing going. Friday, we're going out to, or we're going to be doing the the Biker Olympics Rodeo Games at the Still Pony, and obviously all week long, we're going to be working on Sturgis Live. Hope to see you guys in Sturgis. If nothing else, if you are coming, if you aren't coming, be safe. Be kind to each other right now because the world is a fucking mess. It really <laughs> is. And, like, the only, thing that can, the only thing that you can do is change your little part of it right here. So turn to the people that you're with. Love them. Respect them. Do your thing. Until next week when we're coming back at you with more Shop Talk. Same chopper time. Same chopper channel. Bye, Felicia. Ha, <laughs>